like it's on the dope. How I live the rap life. Making money, smoking my life. Crack is on the dope. How I live the rap life. Making money, smoking my life. Crack is on the This is the original. Los Angeles beats that are live. Tweet Cadillac, baby. And you tuned in to the G Loose Show. West Side Wednesday. OG, OG Sunday. We're rolling the pimp like. Baby. Cadillac, baby. 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 Yeah. Make sure to tune in. Every Wednesday night, 7 to 9 p.m. Some different in your life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Niggas wanna know how I live the rack life. Making money, smoking mic like crack is like a note. How I live the rack life. Making money, smoking mic like crack is like a note. How I live the rack life. Making money, The areas that I practice in, criminal defense and entertainment, they chose me. When I was a young girl, I had friends, I had family members that experienced situations in the criminal justice system. Those experiences left me in a position where I wanted to help. I wanted to do more because of how that affected my own family. As far as entertainment, I was involved in entertainment since I was a young girl. I loved it. I loved the business side of entertainment in addition to the talent side. But what I realized, a lot of people that are great entertainers, they may not know business. They may not know contracts. They may not know how to negotiate. So my experiences just led me to want to be that business mind or that go-to for the entertainer. My son made some bad decisions and decided to go with the crowd of people who were breaking in cars. When they're in jail, you as parents, you have no control. You just hope and pray for the best. Tiffany Simmons treated us like family. She really cared about what was going on and that we can rest assured that she's doing everything she can. And she did. She was a blessing to us. When I met Tiffany, I was five, six years into comedy. You know, I was just getting to the point where people were starting to notice me. But she came at a perfect time. So she accompanied me on trips sometimes to make sure things go right. Also with uh, contract reviews and even drafting them, enforcing some of those contracts when things don't always work out the way they're supposed to. She is the Floyd Mayweather of uh, lawyers. Like, you know, she's undefeated. Tiffany Simmons is the only choice you got. I'll never be an old man in a suit. I am myself. I'm a female. I'm young. I'm fearless. I am a person that's not afraid to do the right thing, and I'm not afraid to speak up on behalf of my clients and their needs. We are the voice for the voiceless and we speak on behalf of those that cannot speak for themselves. Yes, yes. Uh, Welcome to West Side Wednesdays, the G. Lou Show, and as you heard in that very uh, great introduction right there, our guest for the evening is the lovely and talented and founder and uh, owner of Simmons Law Firm in Atlanta, Georgia, and abroad, the lovely Miss Tiffany Simmons. Welcome her to the show. Hello, sweetheart. Hey, how you doing? Can you hear me? Yes, yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me good? <laughs> yep, I can. Thanks for having me again for another time on the show. Yes, Simmons Law, we are the law business of this generation. Founded it in 2009, so this year we celebrate 10 years. Wow, that's a great accomplishment right there, Tiff. Uh, and like she said, uh, this is our second time on the show. We had her on here, I don't know, about a year or so ago, and it's definitely a pleasure to have you back. And uh, since then, I know you've done more great uh, and inspiring things. You just keep on going. I call I I I I named you uh, Superwoman. You know what I mean? Because you do so much. You know, I follow you 
uh, everything you're doing. And, you know, you're always so busy. Even tonight, I know uh, you probably had a busy day. You're all over the place, all over the country at all times. So we definitely uh, appreciate you taking our time to join us tonight. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Like I say, thank you for having me. Yeah, today was a, uh, yeah, busy day. Sometimes people don't um, understand that lawyers, we're human too. You know, you call me superwoman, but sometimes I'm just Clarkisha Kent, you know, around here. Right, <laughs> and, uh, right. With that being said, you know, today um, I had to witness someone um, will celebrate the life of someone. So shouts out to Gabriel G. Brunson, rest in peace. Shouts out to his wife. Trina Brunson and his family. I just want to shout them out. Um, yeah, it's been a long day for me, to be honest. It, it really has. Right, right. Um, tell us, uh, uh, before we continue, you know, I want to get into a lot of things, but uh, before we do that, tell us what you've had, you know, since the last time we talked to you, uh, what you've been doing, because I know you've done a lot. You, uh, you know, you took your business from Atlanta to abroad. I know you went to the West Coast. You know what I mean? My stomping ground for a minute, L.A. and did your thing, and you're just all over the place. What you been doing since the last time we spoke with you? Um, Just building Simmons Law, continuing with that. Yes, I did go West Coast. I actually do a lot of stuff West Coast. I'll be back in L.A. Um, the 29th. So the week after next, I'll be back there doing some business, handling some stuff out there. Um, Simmons Law is just continuing to grow. We're continuing to service our clients. We picked up some bigger cases uh, that's been in the news this year, um, you know. So that's been something that has been uh, a major growth for Simmons Law. And then, in addition to that, still doing community events, um, still supporting the Atlanta community as well as communities abroad, communities um, in of my Michigan area because I was born in Michigan, as well as in Florida, as well as in Cali. So the next thing right. for attorney Simmons outside of being the attorney I am going to be releasing my fifth book soon um I've been in on film and tv if any of your right. audience watches couples court I was just on couples court this past week <laughs> wow 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 that that's a lot Tiff I mean how do you uh let me ask you this how do you find so much time to do everything that you do you're kind of like a one one um not man one woman's show i know you have help you know you have a uh 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 people that help you and all but you do a lot on your own mm -hmm. i mean independent and everything like how do you find enough time to 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 do your court things your lawyer thing but then find time to uh do community service and then have time for yourself i see you you definitely make time for yourself you vacation a lot go have a lot of fun you're not your typical lawyer you know what i mm -hmm. mean like you see you in your nah, Jordans and I'm all not. that. You're in the courthouse. You're not your typical lawyer. Like, how do you, how did you find time to do all this? How did you even find time to, to brand yourself how you did and like, you know, make everything? Because you're very successful at what you do, but it looks like you have fun doing it. How, how were you able to accomplish all of this? Because you just said it. I have fun doing the things that I do. Everything I do when I every day is different for me. Let me back up. Every single day is different for me. But when I get up in the morning, the, the first things I do, I pray, I meditate, I figure out what's the, the moves that I need to make. And I trust God throughout all of that. The thing about it is a lot of people, um, they want to box lawyers in or box me in or box, box black women in. And that's so unfortunate for them because God made me to do so many things. Um, a lot of time we don't invest in ourselves. And we're just doing ourselves and the people around us a disservice. So that's what I do. I invest in myself. Me practicing law is investing in myself because that's something I'm passionate about. Me taking violin lessons again after 15 plus years of not playing is something that I do because I'm passionate about it. And that's a way for me to put my energy into things that are positive. Because the thing about right. it is being an attorney is not easy. It is one of the highest stress field professions behind emergency room doctors. And then, right. to, you know, add more statistics or whatever to that, less than 3% of black women are attorneys. So you'll never see an attorney that looks like me. You'll never see one. You'll never hear one like me. You'll never, ever experience that. 20 years from now, they're going to be talking about Tiffany Simmons, a.k.a. the plug lawyer. And I know it. 
I mean, all of this is just right. God's plan. So that's how it's easy to me, or it appears to be easy. But it's not easy. Right. But I just know that there are little girls, there are young men, there are even adults that are inspired and motivated by me living, you know, for lack of a better word, living my best life and whatever that means to me. Right, right, right. Uh, that That's a great answer. Uh, let me ask you this. How do you... Uh, uh, how can I say this? Not, not uh, first, first two part question. I want to ask you, uh, okay. how I'm do, ready. <laughs> how are you, per- okay, how are you perceived in your field? Like being that you're not your typical lawyer, you're a black female, young black female, beautiful lady, and 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 you're not your typical lawyer. How how are you viewed or 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 uh, uh, what's the word like uh, from your peers or other lawyers or people just in the field? Period. How do they accept you and take you? Do you have to? Is a lot of uh, well, the thing hurdles is, you have to go across to get respected? No, because I'm well respected in my um, community. I'm well respected in the legal community. Um, first off, because my work speaks for itself. I've never lost a trial in 10 years, civil or criminal. I'm never afraid to take any ca- case. As long as a client is able to retain my services, I'm able to do the job. So as far as my colleagues, I'm well respected amongst my colleagues. And then even on the personal end, um, a lot of colleagues, they do say that they're inspired by me because I'm staying authentic to myself. It's very difficult being or trying to be something that you're not. But it's easier when you're authentic and you're unique and you're, you know, just living who you are. And that's what I do. Again, I'm not, I don't say that it's easy because there are things that I aspire to do. There are places that I aspire to, um, to be. And I know that I have right. to continue to grow so I can get there. However, right. at the end of the day, I'm not here for clout. I'm not here to uh, make friends. I'm here to inspire. I'm here to impact. I'm here for my bag. I'm here to do something for my family and my future children. Right. So, you right. know, once you have that vision and you stay focused on that vision that you have, um, you know, you you destined to win. And that's with anything and anybody. For the most part, right. I try to do more positive in the world than falling to my, my ego or my pride and doing something negative. Because, I mean, I didn't get right. the Pudge Lawyer name from just being a pretty girl. And you, you know that. Right. You've known me so right. years I know now. You. Right, right, <laughs> so, right. Exactly. So a lot, exactly. of, a lot of stuff that I've experienced, I, I left home, uh, Grand Rapids, Michigan, at 17. So I was a kid that learned a lot of stuff. The hard way, the the long road, right. the road that you work for, the road that's getting it out of the mud. So, yeah, you know, sometimes outside people looking in, if they're not inspired, they try to judge or they try to um, say certain things. But at the end of the day, like I say, I have to trust God. I have to be true to myself and what he has called me to do. Right, right, great, great, great answer. Uh, let me ask you this. Part of that two-part question, before I get to that, since you spoke on that, how is it like now uh, being that, you know, coming from where you come from, not only Grand Rapids, but going on to college, doing what you did, and, and, and how are, how is it like now being that you accomplished a lot, but uh, you probably see a lot of people that you uh, came across coming up that probably had no idea where you would be today, you know, um, I'm not going to say I was one of them. I always seen the potential in you, but no one ever knew this was the road you would take and, and the things you would do today. How was it coming, running back across a lot of those people, whether they be haters or people that supported or were, were not sure or, or, or whatnot, and now that they see you now, uh, how was how was the reception? You get a lot of love or, or confusion or people just like, wow. Or, 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 I mean, how was that? Because, you, you, you know, I know you, you know a lot of people, and, and a lot of people knew you before. Uh, your accomplishments, accomplishments now, what you're doing now. So how is that running across those same paths? Like I know you go back and uh, frequent, you know, uh, FAMU and a lot of, you know, your places that you came up in. Um, I mean, the reception when I see, when I see people from my, my past has always been, you know, good because overall, you know, I'm a good person. I strive to just be mm-hmm. a good person overall, past being the lawyer past being on court TV, past being on, you know, law and crime, because those are some of the things that I do as well. I've been um, a legal trial analyst on some of the national uh, stations. So 
So past right. all of that stuff, I'm still Tiffany. So when they see me, it's right. always love. It's always something good. And if it's not something, you know, that's love or positive, I remove myself from that situation. Because, um, you know, right. once you right. once you get to a certain point in your life, you have to understand that you have to set boundaries. So even people that have right. known me from my past that think that they still know me, I even still have boundaries with them because you don't know me right. today. It's twenty. It's guaranteed right. twenty twenty. Like if you look on in my home office right now, my my whiteboard has my twenty twenty to do list, and we still in in October. So you know my head is in a different space. However, I'm still receptive to seeing you know and and interacting with people that I know and even people that I I meet moving forward because God got a, right. a whole lot more in store for me to do. That's right. That's right. Uh, let me ask you this as well. How were you able to, uh, over all this time, not get yourself caught up uh, with, say, like uh, being at your uh, a successful uh, lawyer now and a se- successful individual? Like I said, again, a beautiful young lady, and you, you cross paths with a lot of different people, whether it be from the past or present, and you run into a lot of different cats and, you know, being a lawyer, probably clients, anything in the streets or anything. How were you able to avoid being caught up with maybe like relationships, bad relationships. I know at one time you were in a relationship. I don't want to talk about that, but just moving forward to, to keep you moving forward and not being caught up in those things like, you know, uh, you know, relationships or, or dudes or whatever the case may be, being that you're a successful young lady, beautiful young lady and, and doing what you do. Um, well, the thing sense. is you have to, I uh, kind of, but it don't, because I don't avoid <laughs> love. I don't. I'm trying I mean, to make it sound right. I'm dating. trying to be professional here. <laughs> <laughs> I don't avoid <laughs> dating. I don't avoid love. I don't avoid, uh, you know, can I curse on your station or not? <laughs> yeah, you can say what you want to say. You can say what I you don't, want to say. You know, Sounds I don't good? avoid, uh, I can't say I don't avoid. I try to avoid fuck boy behavior, but, you know, shit happens. You know, it's life. Right, right. And, what I take from situations is what can I do to make myself better? The more that I'm better in myself and being a whole person myself, the more I'm going to attract those things. Um, you know, you mentioned love. It, sometimes it can be uh, difficult and challenging being a, a woman of power dating because you get, you know, you guys be intimidating. That, uh, well, not even intimidating because if I'm a, if you're intimidated by me, then you can never lead me. And so you're not the man for me, period. So right. I, I'm not even going to accept that. What I'll say is um, I've been in situations where guys have had more than me, um, were farther than me in their careers or whatever, but they couldn't control me. Right. So that made it very difficult and, and for them. Not me, but difficult for right. them um, because they were so used to situations where they were the one in, in control. Um, right. Love is not about control. Love is about <laughs> loving people as they are and letting people be who they are. And to be quite honest, in all of my years, I have uh, yet to experience the person that loves Tiffany unconditionally. Not Tiffany mm. the lawyer, not Tiffany the pretty girl. Not Tiffany what she can do, not Tiffany how supportive she can be, not Tiffany in the bedroom, not any of those things, but just Tiffany. Um, mm. You know, today, with, with, you know, I'm going to give you a, a real example. Today, I, I'm okay. going to a, the funeral of, of someone, um, you know, that I know. Um, right. Out of all the guys that I dated or date or like me or whatever, who sends texts or this and that or who may have you know, took me on dates, whatever the, the case may be. I just wanted someone to be there for me today. And that's free, being there for somebody. Right. I'm, I'm right. a girl, I, I can I can purchase anything I fucking want. I can get right. whatever I want. But the, the right. shit that's free, it's hard to Price come it. by, or it has been hard to come by um, in, in situations I've been in. Because a lot of um, men... They don't really understand that. They don't really understand that a, a good woman, sometimes it ain't about um, you trying to control them. It ain't about what you can give them or how you can put them on. If you're not making somebody's life better, just don't be around them, period. You know? 
Right. Yeah, yeah, I agree totally. Like, a lot of people I agree totally. a lot of people is tied to you know, a lot of people tied to relationships because of kids, because of bills, because of you know, it's a money situation. Everybody I've ever dated or loved is because I wanted to, period. Wanted right. to. So, you right. know, at the end of the day to wrap up what you asking me, um, you know, the the person that is going to do all the things that I need to receive at this point in my life, it's it's around and it it happens a lot. I receive a lot mm-hmm. of good love from friends and, you know, et cetera. But as far as that, that real partnership that's God given, like, you know, the the King family or some Will and Jada type stuff or even my dad and his wife, my grandparents was sixty five years in and they both died still loving each other and married. Those type of situations, I gotta trust God for that. I don't want no social right. media relationship. <laughs> right, I got you. I don't you. want that. So, you know, it. to kind of wrap it up, that's how I avoid a lot of the bullshit. I don't want what just look good on the outside and it's fucked up on the inside. I want what's real, even if it's taking, right. you know, a lot of time. Yeah. Right, right. And, and, and one more thing on that, and I'm going to finish that as far as relationships and, and that type of thing. How do you, uh, how can I say this? distinguish or differentiate the kind of guys that you do like because I know I know you and I know maybe what you you know maybe a type of guy that you like opposed to what you do the field that you're in and like how do you can can you now like not mess with certain type of guys or do you you know th- th- does that matter now or can you still kind of uh you know do that do what you want to do date a certain kind of guy being at, in the field that you're in where it won't cross paths or 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 not, like I said again, make a different type of guy intimidated, not intimidated, but being a, in in the field that you're in. Oh, you know what I mean? Maybe I can't I can't holler at her, or she won't accept me, or or I don't know. Or do you? Again, now, I can't. I I, I can't. Know. You know, I can't think for no man. I don't know how. A, I can't. You know, answer that because that's from a male's perspective of what they how they see me. As far as me, I date who I like. I interact with who I right. like. I, I feel somebody's energy. If your energy is good and our energy is good together, then, you know, then, then we're going to rock with it. I don't, I don't necessarily say, um, as far as criteria for me, like I look at a person's heart. I look at how you treat your kids, how you treat your family, how you treat your mom, your dad. Do you have siblings? Um, how do you treat your staff if you're a, a boss? You know, so I, I look at different stuff than what kind of job you do. Um, mm-hmm. Now, I will say at, at the point of the, li- the life that I'm in, I'm not going to attract, you know, uh, let's say yeah, the no manager riffraff. at McDonald's. I mean, I'm not going to yeah, attract yeah, the yeah. manager at McDonald's. He might think he's attracted to me, but that's not the level of, of where my life is. Right. And I'm not going to, you right. know, that's not for me. Um, right. Or I'm not going to accept um, the corner boy that's selling weed on the corner. That's not that's not the lifestyle for me. So, again, it's, right. it's just... Um, you know, it's one of them things. I, I like who I like. I like a, uh, I don't know. I, I, I like to attract someone that makes me feel comfortable being myself, period. That's right. That, right, right, right. That, that's a great answer. I just wanted your take on that, you know, <laughs> just, uh, you know, overall, you know, because, you know, uh, again, you know, uh, Tiffany Simmons, you know, the lawyer you're listening to, uh, great, great lady, woman you know i've known her you know for some years and i'm just i know i spoke on this before i don't want to speak too much but i'm very proud of you and uh what you've done and um you know it's just great to uh uh just just see your accomplishments you inspire me you know i'm sure a lot of other people but just to see your grind and just just still going you know you don't stop and and the independence that you have and and not taking nothing and just living your life your best life you know it's inspiring to a lot of people including me so I just wanted to say that and, um, you know, uh, and just probably ask you that for a lot of people who just may want to know that and guys in particular. But I'm sure you don't have no problem with that. I'm sure the DM is lit up all the time, you know what I mean, because you're always, you know, uh, uh, you know, you're out there living your life and, and doing it well and having fun at it. So uh, much props to you on that. Salute to you on that. So enough of that, you know, relationship shit and all of that. Uh, uh <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. I want to go back a, a little bit, uh, back up a little bit, and uh, I want to know how. Uh, I know we spoke about this a little bit before. We have a lot of new listeners, and and you know maybe some things I didn't ask you, but what uh, made you uh, take the path of of wanting to be uh, a lawyer and things? Because I know when you were in school, that wasn't originally. You know, when I knew you, what you were studying. So how did that? Uh, you know, what made you want to do take that path? Uh, well, since I was a kid, I've said I wanted to be a lawyer, um, and a lot of that stems from things I experienced. Um, being a girl that wanted to do entertainment or was in entertainment, I did commercials, modeling, all sorts of stuff, TV production when I was a little girl or a younger girl. So for me, right. it was like, okay, I can always be a pretty face, but let me know the business side of this so I can really get to that bag. Like like mm-hmm. I said, a, a big part of my motivation is for me to provide for my family. I come from a hardworking family, um, and, you know, I just want us to continue to live a good life. Now, as far as how law school came about or, you know, the transition to that, when I was at FAMU, I was studying business, another thing right. that I was around. I was around business all of my life from my family. I come from a family of entrepreneurs. So, again, another area I was passionate about. I didn't talk about law a lot at that point, not at all. But right. I would say maybe about um, probably about four or five years after I graduated from FAMU, that's when I decided, okay, what's next? What do I want to do? And I ended up revisiting the law scene for some reason. I don't know how it came about, but I revisited it and got into law school. The rest is history. And I remember okay. going home to visit some family and I found this book that I wrote when I was a little girl because I've always written since I was a kid, poetry, poems, everything. Um, so the right. book was like my, it was like, I wrote it in fifth grade. It was my autobiography. And in there, I said that I was going to be a very successful attorney. So that book, I would use that book as motivation when I would be studying or when I was trying to, you know, uh, study for the bar exam. I passed the bar exam on the first time. So that wow. was motivation, seeing what my fifth grade mind imagined and, you know, that's just how it came about. It was something that, like I say, it was God's plan. When I go into court right. or when I'm talking to a client, sometimes I have to pray with them. Sometimes I have to counsel them through other stuff. It's bigger than the legal case. It's so much other stuff that that goes on outside of that, um, that, you know, God has me in the position to work through and help people through. And I, right. I, I owe it all to him because Tiffany – I'm a real, I'm a, I'm a, a real one. <laughs> Tiffany ain't trying to do none of that. Tiffany don't, don't mess with the, the courts and police like that. So right. I know this is God's plan. No, I'm dead. I'm serious. Right. No, I know. I know. That's why I'm laughing because I know. I, you so know what I, I, mean? I, I know, you know, this is part of God's plan for me. Me doing the stuff right. on film and TV. That's also part of God's plan for me as well. So, you right. know, it, it is what it is. I, I love the things that I do. I love people um, being uh, mystified at how I can handle all the stuff that I do or how I can do the things that I do. The thing mm-hmm. about it is we all blessed. We all have talents. We all blessed with a lot of stuff. It's a matter of whether you're going to do it or not. Right, right, if right. If you ain't going to exactly. do it, somebody else is. Exactly, exactly. And that that's great right there because uh like you said, everybody has their own talent. Everybody can there's no need to look at the next person and say, Why are they doing that and what are they doing and worrying about what they're doing. Everybody has their own talents and gifts from God that, that God has given you. We just have to figure out how to use it to the best ability and take it to the next level. You know what I mean? And um and just strive and just do it. You know, a, a great example is the homie Nip who passed away left a great example you know what i mean um the marathon continues and you're definitely a a, a, yep. a great example of that you know what i mean and um like again i'm just very proud of you tiff you know what i mean uh i never would have knew years ago you know but uh i definitely would have known but i just wouldn't have known how you would have done it but it's just very great to see you know somebody that you knew and uh you know saw from a pup just 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 turned into a big dog you know what i mean and, and you out here barking heavy you know so uh much props to you uh 
Before I continue, uh, I want to let we got a lot of callers out there. If you want to speak to uh, Tiffany, you have any questions, legal concerns, anything, she's here to answer that. So uh, the call-in number is 914-803-4001. If you're already in the queue, you can press 1, and uh, we'll bring you in. Uh, we got a couple callers I want to go to, if you don't mind, right quick, Tiff. Yeah, we could go ahead to the callers. Okay, caller, hello, 360. You're live hey, online with it. Tiffany Simmons. Hey, 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 what's up? Okay. What's um, up, Jane? How are you? Had, I'm, I'm doing well. I'm doing better. Thank you for asking. Um, okay. I just got to tell Tiffany, if you don't mind, I call you by your first name. I feel like I know you. I have a dear <laughs> friend in Atlanta, Georgia, who um, is in the process of getting your retainer and things together. But what I want to say about you is that you... Speak to these people who need your help. You are there. Even if you they can't come up with whatever needs to be done to have you as their attorney, you you advise them and you help them. And you're amazing. I've followed you because I even though I live in Washington, I know uh, state of Washington. I know a lot of people in Atlanta, Georgia, and you are so well spoken of. And just major props to you for coming here today and talking after going to a funeral. Thank you. Um, Another thing I wanted to ask, you say you do go to California. Do you take any cases out of California? First, I would like to say thank you for what you said. I really appreciate hearing that. Um, I do have clients in California. I don't handle criminal cases in Cali. The business okay. that I handle in California is um, for my business clients and things that I work on outside of the the law business. Understood. Um, but I do have can, um, referrals in California for clients okay. that are people that okay. may need help. I'll I'll hit you up. I'll hit go to your. Uh, your page because I've been on there before reading up about you and different things as far as okay. uh, your Google you and everything because Thank uh, you. yeah our our IG page is official Simmons Law my IG is the plug lawyer we often give a lot of information on on my YouTube channel you can find me Tiffany Simmons I started a vlog on there as well um, just oh, to kind of show people the things that I do outside of practicing like I just posted um, one of the vlog stories of me going on a fishing um, trip um, probably like two oh, weeks there ago. You go. So, so, yeah, up. you know, it's definitely information out there. I, and like you said, I do try to cater to those that can't afford legal services. I mean, I, I, yeah. I'll be honest. I'm not I'm not cheap. And that's because you're going to pay for excellent well, service. You're, you're going to get excellent service. Right. Yeah, you're exactly. absolutely right. Um, best, but with that being right. said, we do have resources that are out there that are uh, more economical for people. So thank you for, for calling right. in. I appreciate you. Oh, I appreciate you. You have no idea. Thank you so much. Thanks, G. Lou. I love you as always. All right. Thanks, Jane. Love you too. Much love. Much love. Peace. Bye. All righty. All right. Bye, uh, Tiffany. I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, you that got was, love, that was dope. That was you got dope. real love I out need, here. I need all the love today. I appreciate all the love today. I need it so I can keep going. Because right, at the right. end of the and day, you know, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go no, I was just going to say condolences saying, to whoever funeral you went to. I don't know who they are, but condolences to uh, to uh, whoever you lost. Go ahead. Thank you. Um, again, that was uh, G. G. Money Brunson. He is one of the founders of a drug dealer's dream podcast. I was on that podcast um, right after I came back to the practice of law. So if any of your listeners listen to podcasts, they can check that out. Support, um, you know, my episode. They have a lot of episodes on there with some great people as well. Um, so, yeah, rest in peace, G, again. And thank you so much. But what I was going to yeah. say is, you know, Again, you've known me a lot of years, and I get more yeah. accomplished when I focus on acting out of love and not out of my anger. Because I know where my right. anger can go. I know where my anger can take me. I know how um, the power of my words and the choices that I make 
So I'm very, very careful, um, especially at this point in my life in this age, um, with setting boundaries with certain situations because right, it works right. out better for everybody, you know, and that's why right. I say often, um, you know, focus on the good, focus on the positive, put more positive out the negative because I know if my negative go there, my negative gonna hurt a whole <laughs> lot of stuff and a whole lot of people, hey, and that's that's no sure. game. For sure, because you would never. Hey, I can say this for Tiffany right here, as long as I known her, she wasn't never no punk, and and, and it's just it, it, I can understand now how you could take that into the legal field and be a lawyer and and speak your voice because she never was definitely never uh uh held her bitter tongue. She was always outspoken. And will uh, you know give you the business? I, you know what I mean. I know that personally. So you know, just like you said, knowing how to channel that anger and make turn it into a positive is a great thing. And definitely, uh, again, I'm sure inspiring to a lot of women out there, younger women, because uh, you're in the communities. You know what I mean. Um, you're in the commu- You're not like just in the office or up here in Buckhead or whatever. You're in the communities of Atlanta and abroad, wherever you go. You know, you touch the people, you, you know what I mean? You mingle with, you love, you're like a regular person. Like you said, you're not a regular, you're average lawyer. And on top of that, you're a female lawyer, black female lawyer, successful, undefeated in 10 years. You know, that's a great accomplishment. And um, and um, I'm just glad you can channel that, uh, like you said, uh, how you speak and, and, and not let that anger, you know, channel into a different way. You know what I mean? And it's uh, exactly. a beautiful thing. Exactly. Yeah, that's a beautiful thing. Um, definitely. Um, Thank you. You know, another I, way to to channel, you know, your your energy or your anger. Or, you know, if you're a lawyer or you in law school or whatever, is working out. Another accomplishment that I'm proud of this year is I feel like I'm in yeah, the I best see. health of my life. I've lost. I see you got all fine on. Them. I see you. I see you. I see you. January to now, I've lost almost fifty pounds and fifty pounds. I feel amazing. Yeah. Yeah, and the thing about it is wow. people like, oh, you, you want big, you, you look good, big, and blah blah blah. But I wasn't healthy. Don't nobody want their fucking legs to be rubbing, <laughs> or you know, don't nobody right. want to feel like they can't, you know, do the things that they need to do. Health for me is from the inside out. So in addition to losing the weight, I worked on, you know, my mental health, emotional health. Um, shout right. out to therapy. Black people need therapy. Black men. Yeah, I've been therapy. hearing that a lot lately. It's nothing. Because you know, as black people, we don't believe in that. But I, I, I've been well, hearing a lot about that. That, that, that is good. To... That narrative should change because it's very helpful. It's very. But helpful. it's hard. Um, it's hard. So I mean, I can speak personally. It's hard, like, because you know, especially black men or, or, or certain men. You know what I mean? Even myself speaking, it's hard to uh uh speak out you know what i mean be accepted to people you know what i mean especially when you've been through a lot you know you, you it, it's hard to you know talk to people tell you, you keep a lot built in and have want to want to take exactly. care of things yourself don't want to talk you know like i got this you don't want to tell people your business so that's hard but i could see you know maybe like you said therapy even though that that's kind of a myth in the black community like wow but but sometimes we do need somebody to talk to because we don't talk to anybody you know what i mean not even family nobody sometimes right. you just keep well, stuff the bottled about in it is making... sometimes right if you bottle it in it's gonna come out in some way or the other um a lot of right. the anger that i had bottled in as a young girl it came out in anger it came out in in how i treated people how i talked how disrespectful i was at times that came out of me needing to express some things and talk to a professional my the professional that i talk to is a black female find a black female find a black male so the excuse of we you know we don't want to tell anybody your business that's what they're there for that's what god placed them there for and the thing about it is me speaking to a therapist through the things that i've experienced um you know throughout life because i've dealt with a whole lot on top of you know, the challenges and frustrations of being a lawyer, I still had my own life to deal with. You know, like you right, say, right. you know you know Tiffany the plug lawyer and attorney Simmons. And Tiffany right. I've dealt with I've dealt with people close to me committing suicide back to back. I felt I've dealt with people dying back to back. I've dealt with Imagine your law partner passing away and you have to go identify their body. And you never identified a body before 
in your life for nobody. Wow. Imagine that. And then and then the very next day, somebody calling you saying, oh, such and such died yesterday. Well, what's going to happen with my case? Imagine people wow. saying you just you're just being the lawyer for money and, 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 and you and you work for free for them. I mean, it's so many variables that attorneys or me personally, I've dealt with. If I didn't seek professional help, I wouldn't have been my best self to be here now. I wouldn't have been here now to be be able to articulate to you and your audience the importance of therapy if I hadn't Mm -hmm. did that. So it is very uncomfortable to do that. But if you experience a lot of trauma and loss or or various things like I, I've had a friend that was murdered in the morning and my, my other friend slash little brother was charged with murder that night. So two different black men that were dear to me lost to, to death in the system. It's so wow. much that people don't know that I experience that I deal with. And so I thank God for my, my therapist. Cause again, I, right. I, I'd be a little bit, more crazier than people think I am now. <laughs> right, right. Well, let me, let me, that's right. But on a positive let me ask note, you. for real, for real, therapy is okay. good. You should do that. And let's continue to change the narratives. Let me add one more thing, because I know you got one more question, but let me add this about changing the narrative. Um, if there are any ladies that are bright to be on your, um, that's in your audience that listens to your station, if you're, if you get married to a bride, Check out Official Simmons Law on IG. We have a contest. Again, we want to change the narrative because we love love. We are gifting mm-hmm. a wedding dress to a special bride. All she has to do is email to um, the plug lawyer at Gmail why she should win that dress. And it was a dress that I purchased for, I did a birthday shoot. My birthday was in September. I did a photo shoot in a wedding dress. And we want right. to share that love with somebody that's getting married so anybody that's listening this is actually the final week to enter so everybody if you know a bride tell them to enter to win the beautiful dress that's on the official simmons law ig so again we're changing that narrative that black women we want to be wise black women are wise um women in general professional women powerful women we want to be loved too (laughs) okay 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 great answer and and i want to ask you Oh my God! I want to ask you a two-part well, question. Well. <laughs> but before, I, before, but wait, before I do that, I gotta go to the phone lines. I got callers who want to check okay. in. I'll talk all night. Okay. Let me go to the phone Let's lines. I got a special them. caller. I'm still caller. Here. Hello. What's up? Uh, Doctor Ism. Uh, uh, caller. Hello. Uh, 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 order in the courtroom. <laughs> <laughs> who is this? Hi, caller. Uh, it is the it is the the Doctor Ism E S Q. And uh, you're putting a lot of points and authorities on the table that make a lot of sense. I am proud to know that you are not <laughs> able to just pass the bar, but raise the bar in regards to your expectations and the shifting and the paradigm that we recently and currently see right now. So not only are we going to shift and change the narrative, <laughs> but we're going to shift the paradigm. So as a black man that's a hood attorney predicated on a criminal background, <laughs> I can honestly tell you that, one, G. Lou, your show has got it to a sophisticated level of professionalism that's unprecedented by (laughs) Blog Talk Radio. Two, you you have a very interesting person on there who can switch vernaculars faster than a Ferrari can change gears. Fucking right. (laughs) Third of all, in regards to your mental health, uh, I'm going to say this, that black people don't suffer from PTSD, which is post traumatic stress disorder. We suffer from ATSD, which is active traumatic stress disorder. Big difference. So, a Vietnam veteran, he gets help. The homie in the hood that's a veteran, he don't get no help. So when you see a sister like this, just think of the metaphor that the cream always rises to the top. And she accepted that challenge to change, just like the sister Jean that's with you. You know, all these black women are, are, are prime candidates but the only thing is the harvest is great, but the work is a few. So she's mm. willing to share her life and her life dream of being a bride, a professional, black urban professional to be exact, 
with someone who may be less fortunate, that dress that she offers to that girl may inspire the next ESQ to come out. Mm. Exactly. Exactly. So what I'm going to say to you is normally I'll raise the bail of a situation like this and file a 995. <laughs> but today, 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 I'm going to dismiss my own case and say congratulations. Not only are you successful at passing the bar, but you brought your infinite divine wisdom to the G. Lu Show, which is the Hidden University of America. And the fact of the matter being that you wear it so proudly. So I'm honored to say that. Trust me, I got some other slick stuff I could say. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure. I feel your vibe. It's all good. You can, I got you, slick stuff too now. I got you might slick be stuff sure, too baby. now. You might be sure, baby, but you ain't never used Aridex to dry. <laughs> <laughs> Strong enough Thank for a man, so but made for a woman. <laughs> thank you so much for calling in and thank you so much for your comments. I appreciate that. And um stay tuned. Mm-hmm. There's a lot more coming from uh attorney Simmons, Tiffany Simmons, aka the plug lawyer in the building, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> that far. Hey. Okay, Malik, we got a real one tonight, Malik. I, I got I got a chance to make my segue. You know the name mm-hmm. of my law firm, right? A O B. A-O-B, all on a bitch. <laughs> hold, on, okay. hold up, hold up, hold up. Dr. Ism, Dr. Ism, Dr. Ism. <laughs> Thank you, she sir. Said, she said, hold Thank up. you, sir. She told them bitches, hold up, bitch. I got to let her know. I got a law firm, too, buddy. Hold up. <laughs> yeah. But I'm really proud of you. I'm glad to hear that you're the first African-American sister outside of my friend Chapman who worked with Dr. Johnny Cochran. That was a very prominent lawyer during the O.J. Simpson case. She's also from the streets. But I really want to commend you, and I hope that your job and your influence and the pro bono work that you do daily help influence the next generation of successful attorneys to come. Thank you so much. You're quite welcome. Thank you, Malik, Dr. Ism. And if any of you fellas out there ever need an attorney, just contact 1-800-AOB. (laughs) <laughs> Shout out to my bad Malik, man That's Malik Spellman, a.k.a. the L.A. Peacemaker Dr. Ism, okay. man Thank you again, bro Yeah, yeah, yeah He's okay. a prominent figure in L.A. I might have LA to run street. into him I'll be, um, yeah. like I say, I'll be in L.A. So if any of your listeners want to, you know, link up I might be available I'll be there October 29th um, For some business And uh, if you got a, a radio show, talk show any TV show, all of that I'll pull up on you He, he works Blue with show. He's with Spectrum, okay. uh, the cable. Uh, yeah. He, uh, G-Lu. Tell him, Malik. G-Lu. Yes, sir. G. Lou, let, let him think I'm a savage. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. He's All right. still on there. G. Lou, a wise yes, man. Sir. A wise yes, sir. man can play the part of a wise man can play the part of a fool, but a fool exactly. can't play the part of a wise man. Exactly. Therefore. The game is to be sold, not to be told. Now, quit telling them all the game now. The game ain't <laughs> sold, baby. I'm just, I'm just giving them the residue from some real shit because, like they say, we was through with it before Busters knew what to do with it. Exactly. That part. <laughs> that part. Malik, thank you, bro. Jesus, Smith. Love you, homie. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Hey, do we have some more callers? Yeah, yeah, we do actually. Uh, let me go to the phone line. We have the lovely Miss Queen Jean checking in with us. Hello, Queen. Hey. Good evening, G. Lou. Good evening, Miss Tiffany. How are you both? I'm good. Great, How are great. you? Great. I wanted to say first, give my condolences to your uh, family, friends, and also congratulations to your ten years of uh, your business. That's awesome. That's really amazing and. Uh, I want to also say blessings to your prosperity and your journey and your greatness and your blessed life that you're living. I mean, I know you said your best, but it's actually your blessed life that you're living. I Thank also you. wanted to um, piggyback on mental health. I believe in mental health. I believe in seeking therapy. I had to seek it when my sister's family was murdered back in 1983. Because I did not know how to handle that. I'm on the phone with my nephew, and then two hours later, we get a phone call saying that her whole family was wiped out execution style. 
um, seven, eleven years old the boys were, and her husband was thirty-three. So I have a question <clears throat> for that. Um, the guy has been incarcerated, of course. He had got twenty-seven years to life, and then when they found out it was a fourth murder he committed in California, they added a ten years, uh, additional ten years. He's been going up uh, for to the board to try to get out. Now, what is the chances of him getting out? Because I was so upset about him murdering my nephews and my brother-in-law the way that he did that I wanted an eye for an eye. So, and he's still living. So when I think about it, that's why I had to get the help, the therapy, because of that. You know, because I was so freaking pissed off that this dude would take their lives like that. You know what I'm saying? Seven, eleven 11 years old, execution style, 12 gauge shotgun. That was just horrific. And for my sister to have to walk in and find her family murdered like that, that was a horrific thing for our family. That was the first horrific murder or death that we had to experience. So I, out of my um, nine brothers and sisters, I decided to go get me some therapy because I knew that I needed that. So with that being said, uh, therapy is good. And black people do be afraid of therapy because they think that if you say you're going to therapy, that if you tell people, oh, I'm crazy, something's wrong with me. But it's nothing wrong with getting therapy because it does help your mental, your spiritual, your emotional. It it helps you to become a better person. So with that being said, what are the chances of him ever getting out of prison? Okay. um, Well, first, um, I want to say that it's a good thing that you got therapy. And I also want to say this. This is something I thought about earlier. In life, we will experience things that will get us stuck. Now, we either can stay stuck or we can use those experiences as motivation to get unstuck. So with that being said, you know, even with the tragedy of what you experienced, that was, you know, basically the catalyst of you getting therapy, Um how in your years since 1983 have you used that as motivation to get unstuck? Because a lot of times we'll remember something and we'll remember it like it's yesterday. I, it's stuff that, that, that happened to me at five. I can remember it like it was yesterday and we're in 2019, you're going to be in 2020. So to, to get to the point of, of what I'm getting to, um, I want you to think about that part first. But to answer the legal question, I am not a psychic, so I can't say the chances of him getting out are slim or this because I don't know all the details. I just know what you're telling me from your point of emotion. And what you can do, if you still have feelings about him possibly being released, what you can do is write to the prison that he's at. Um, If you know he's having a parole hearing, Act to be act to make a victim impact statement or you know some sort of statement on behalf of the family. Those are things that you can do to, um, for lack of a better word, get unstuck from that. Because I feel I feel your energy about it, and I, I feel your hurt, and I'm sorry that that happened to your family. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. So uh, so what you so what you can do moving forward. Is if you, if this person is still in jail and you know that they have a parole hearing, write to the parole board and you express your feelings now and you express how this has affected you even to this day. And that may help um, the situation if you want to keep that person incarcerated. But I don't know what that person has done since they've been incarcerated, if they've had right. good behavior, if they, you know, I don't know any of those things. So I don't want to speculate and give you an answer um, that may be incorrect. Okay. Yeah, I know my sister goes to the parole hearings every time you have one. So, you know, she speaks, excuse me, she speaks mm-hmm. her piece about it. And as far okay. as what well, I've then, done, so as a family, y'all doing the best y'all can do. And if she's right. going there, then as a family, you're doing the best you can do, sweetheart. And with that, like I say, just use that energy to do something positive because you're still here. Like you can right. be gone in the blink of an eye. You never know when God is going to call you home. So do something positive with that energy from that experience. Yeah, I, I used to go, because I worked for um, a police department, and I used to go to the schools and do a lot of speaking on um, crime and um, 
losing family members. So I did use mm-hmm. it as a platform. So yeah, but so yeah, continue thank you. to do that because somebody needs to hear your story. So continue yeah. to do that, even if you don't go to the schools. Continue to talk to people in your community. A lot of times yeah. we're looking for somebody to save us. We can save ourselves. Or just in conversation when when I know of people losing loved ones to Mm -hmm. something so horrific, I do give uh, positive um, information. You know, I speak on how I Mm -hmm. handled it, you know, and I I do give thanks to the uh, mental health part of it, seeking therapy, because that's what helped me tremendously. Other than that, I would probably be incarcerated myself from just, Mm -hmm. you know, losing Mm -hmm. myself to it, so... Yeah, but thank you so much for the information. And like I said, congratulations and blessings to your prosperity uh, with your law firm. And I'm already following you on Instagram, so um, I <laughs> thank to you. follow you. Yes, and I'm a, now I'm going to go to YouTube and check you out as well. And you keep doing what you're doing because you are inspirational. And I hear your hood side, too, so keep that. <laughs> <laughs> You definitely got it in her. Got it in her. Yeah, I look, I hear that. It ain't on me. It ain't on me. It ain't on me. It's in you. It ain't on me. It's in me. That part. That part. Yeah, and you know, and uh, keep elevating on your throne because you're a queen as well. So, you know, keep elevating on your throne. So, I just wanted to say that to you, Miss Tiffany and G. Lou. It's a pleasure. And um, great show. Great show. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Queen Jean. The lovely Miss Queen Jean, we appreciate you. Much love. Um, love any other callers out there who want to speak, you know, uh, the phone lines are open. You can press 1 if you're in the queue, and we'll bring you in. If you want to call in, the call line call in number is 914-803-4001. We have the lovely and talented owner, lawyer, all of that right there, Miss Tiffany Simmons, Simmons Law Firm. Man, um, Tiff, I want to ask you something uh, before we went to the callers, right? A uh, uh, couple things, but... Since we're speaking on the mental health, I spoke on it as well that, uh, you know, I never thought that would be an option, but I understand it more now that it's being spoke about more. But uh, how would one go about trying to find the uh, a, uh, a good fit for you? Like, the how would you how would one go about trying to find a good uh, therapist? You know what I mean? Because you I'm sure you could just call well, numbers or look at the yellow pages, can, but how would you know to find the one to fit you that you could be comfortable you have with? To try Say them. somebody like me. You have to try them out, though. You have to try them out. Um, for me, but you ain't got that time to be therapist. trying to like. Listen, okay. listen. listen okay. to my answer, sir. Okay. okay. <laughs> the okay, thing okay. is, you have to you have to try to find the right fit for you. The therapist that I've been seeing, I've been seeing her over a year, but prior to that, I had. I went through like two or three different ones. Sometimes you may see one person and that may be sufficient for what you need at that moment. And in a month or or a year later, you may choose to see someone else. So again, you, you won't know until you're in the situation. You can definitely start by asking people around you. You can ask friends, you can ask, um, you know, family, you can ask somebody, you know, resources at your job. The, the way that I right. found my most recent therapist was a resource through the state bar. I'm a state bar of Georgia member as a lawyer, and we have a resource that offers services for therapy. So I contacted them. So, again, it, w- it wasn't a comfortable thing to do, but you have to do what's best for you. You have to do um, what you don't want to get. You have to do the, the hard things so your life will get easier later. If that makes sense. Right, right. It, it's it's yeah, not it easy. I mean, a lot of people say they don't have time for anything, but if I can make time out of my day, I'm as a lawyer, I can literally work 24 hours a day if if my right. body would allow if I wanted to. So nobody right. is working harder than a lawyer unless they God. <laughs> right, and, right. Um, so I say that to say. It's a matter of what you want to invest in. As this as the person who says, I want to be healthy, but they don't want to go to the gym or they don't want to eat right, right or they don't want to be disciplined. It's about discipline and consistency with anything. Discipline. So, you know, as far That's as far. finding a, a, a therapist, um, you know, as far as black men, I do know a couple of resources that I can uh, refer people to. So if they want to reach out to me on Instagram or, you know, whatever, I can point some people in the right direction that's in your audience now. So it's just about asking around. 
If you want to find okay. out something, you going you gonna to do what it takes. That's right. That's right. Hey, um, uh, let me ask you this. I got to go to a caller, though. Let me go to a caller, but let me ask you this briefly because I want to speak more about that. But do you find yourself sometimes being a lawyer and that you have to speak not only to your clients but to the jury and the judge and the, the prosecutors? Do you find yourself sometimes uh, – feeling like a therapist because you have to, you know, consult your, 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 your uh, clients and talk to them, make them feel uh, comfortable and, and, and confident that you will win the case and all these things. You, I'm sure you have to deal with a lot of people. Do you sometimes, I'm sure that, that, that's what made you find a therapist because you have to let out some of your energy and frustration. But do you find yourself sometimes being in that seat as well where you're somewhat of a therapist to other people? Yeah. And how do you have that? A lot that? of times. Um, prayer and just use the best wisdom and try to use the best words that I can um, so that the person can receive what I'm saying. Right. And, and going to a therapist, does that help you do that easier or or it's already it natural? I don't know. Um, It's okay. a little bit of both. Because again, like I said earlier, you know, the things that I do as a lawyer um, I know as a God-given talent, I know that God moves through me when I'm doing those things. So it's a little bit of that. I would say the therapy has helped me um, being, it it has helped me process things better, even for myself. Right. Um, when you grow right. up in a environment where your feelings are suppressed or it's, it's a, you know, fuck your feelings environment where you have to push those right. down and keep it moving and just sweep stuff under the rug. Um, right. Sometimes your, your, your feelings don't, they don't come out the right way and you can be misunderstood right. or, or whatever. So therapy has helped me in those areas um, as it relates to my clients, being able to relate stuff to them. But like I tell my clients up front, I'm not very good at customer service. I'm not very good mm -hmm. at being a bill collector. I'm very great at being the <laughs> lawyer. So there are some things, no, I'm serious. So I let, right, there, right. I let them know it. I let them know verbally. I let them know in writing a lot of things up front. So they know what to expect. And to be honest, at this point in my career, um, a lot of my clients are referral only. We don't accept a lot of new clients. It's um, one of those things where it's quality over quantity. Sometimes, you know, mm -hmm. all money is in good money, and I'm not in it for right. the money. So, you know, that doesn't faze me, someone uh, waving money in my face. Right, right. Right, and, and and that brings me to another question. I got so many because, and you just keep bringing more to the table. But before I ask you, let me go to the phone lines. I got a caller waiting on. Okay. Caller four zero four seven two five. Hello. You, You're live you with Tiffany Center. You want the G show? That part. Hello. Caller, hello four zero four. <laughs> four zero four. Hello. Okay, okay, going once, going twice. All righty. Well, maybe they didn't want to speak. They pressed one, though, so I thought they did. Anybody else wants to speak, if you press one, we'll bring you into the show if you just want to listen. That's cool. Again, it's calling numbers 914-803-4001. Uh, uh, Tiffany, I wanted to ask you, too, since you said that, how did how did you get to a point or what point did you get to where? Hello? Yes, I'm here. Oh. Okay. No. Okay. Okay. Uh, what point well, do did we he, have a caller? That what, I thought we did. The caller was there, but they didn't say anything. Uh, let me see. Hold on. Hold on. Okay. Nah, we'll get back to that. But I want to ask you. Um, at what point did you uh understand that? Like you said, it wasn't about the money because I'm sure as a lawyer you want to build your firm and take a lot of clients and do a lot of things. What point? Did you get to where you understood it wasn't all about the money, but more about the integrity and what you wanted to do and move your business forward? You know what I mean? As opposed to just taking anything because of the money. Well, I never take took, take anything in my life about the money. So uh, that's that's just something that came from me naturally. Like Simmons Law is, is a firm that's built on integrity, respect, community, and love. And I've always stood on that. If you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. So, you know, I, I've been around money. I've been around no money. I've been at the White House at 16. I've been in crack houses. So none of that ever fazed me because I've always had nice things 
I've always had access to nice things, and I, I know both sides of the fence. So I never had one of those situations. Now, as a young lawyer, when you're first in the game, yeah, you have to find that balance of what are good cases to accept and what are not, and you have to find that balance of of showing people your value. People pay for your value. People don't pay for right. it just because you're saying I'm a lawyer. They pay for your value. So early on in my career, that was something that I had to learn, and, and, and you know, you only get that through experience. And that's one right. of the reasons why we have our Young Lawyers Boot Camp. That's one of the reasons why I wrote the book, That's Law, Create Your Law Business for This Generation. So the lawyers coming up after me, they can learn from the mistakes or the experiences that I had. Um, I, by right. the grace of God, I'm, I'm still here 10 years in the game. But a lot of that didn't come from, you know, law school or, or you know, just me being a lawyer on paper. No, that comes from, right, like right. I say, it, it, it ain't on you. It's in you. It's in you. That's right. That's right. And um, with that being said, let me ask you another thing, playing devil, devil, devil's advocate, literally. Um, wait, wait. Before I do that, we got a caller again. Let me go to this caller before they check out. Caller, hello, 404. You live with Tiffany Simmons. Hello, Miss Simmons. Yes. How you doing tonight? I'm doing all right. I just had a legal question for you. Okay, and what's your come... name? You ask. Wait, wait, oh, wait. Oh, See, pa- this this what okay, folks do. Apologize. You asking me to give you some <laughs> some service, but you can't even say how you doing this evening. Like, come on, <laughs> bro. See, That's I apologize. That, much, that, that, that you you, you, you right. That's your second time correcting me on that too. But my name is Kevin. Hi, Kevin. How you doing tonight? I'm doing all right. But I just want to know right, when so it comes as far as, what's far up, as what's opening. The I'm, I'm sorry. Let me slow down. I apologize. As far as opening statements, like what's the do's or don'ts or how should they go? Are you a lawyer now? No, but I will be defending myself coming soon. Oh, okay, okay. Um, I mean, an opening statement is... is you telling the jury or the judge what you want them to know throughout the trial. So, you know, that's your time to say what the evidence will show or what you're trying to prove in your case. Um, You know, I I commend you on being your own lawyer, but it's more to lawyering than just what you see, you know, in the courtroom that day. So one of the things that you may want to do to prepare yourself You know, I don't know if you have discovery on your case, which is the evidence for those that don't know discovery is the evidence. So, you know, if you have the the evidence on your case, you have to learn the rules of evidence. Now, a lot of times judges are a little bit more lenient when there is a pro se, um, you know, person, a person representing theirself. Um, They're Mm -hmm. a little bit lenient on the rules of evidence. But if there is a lawyer on the other side of that case, you going to be fucked up, Kevin, and I'm going to just be 100 <laughs> with you. I'm for real. I'm and, and the thing, no, and, but what I will say is I do know people that have represented themselves, and they have won their trial. So you can always pray about it. But one thing I tell people, invest in the stuff that you need. Um, people invest in I've, – I've had times where – clients have came in my office they they gucci down they got the latest iphone they got the ipad they got the gucci purse they got all of this they they car looking cleaner than mine but when i tell them my quote for services they can't afford it or they ask for a payment plan (laughs) and that's that's that doesn't make sense to me because you're wearing the money that you could pay for what you need so a lot of times people say they can't afford a lawyer, but it's just a matter of what you want to pay for. True so enough. Kevin, I appreciate um, that. So I, that's the that's the you know the short answer with as far as opening statements. That's you telling the judge or jury what you want them to learn throughout the trial, what you want them to do as a result. Okay, okay. So there's not nothing in particular that I cannot say or that the other lawyer would have a problem with me saying? Well, sir, I'm not psychic, so I can't sit here and just, okay, okay. I, I don't know. Sure. I, I, I can't say, I don't I don't know the facts of your case. I don't know none of that. Um, I'm just telling you a general answer to your okay, question true. about what opening statements are and what do you do in opening statements. 
Okay. Well, I appreciate that. I appreciate your time. Thank you, Kevin, I for calling in. You, and the best of luck with you with your case, okay? All right. Thank you. Uh huh. Hey, much love, Kevin. Thanks for calling in, homie. Appreciate you, bro. Appreciate you. All right, for sure, for sure. Hey, uh, we got another caller, Tiff. Let me go to the phone lines. Okay. Caller, hello. Caller from San Diego, California. Yeah, what's San going Diego. on, G. Lou? Gene and 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 and, and the man. and the attorney and the attorney girl, I appreciate you. You know what I'm saying? My <laughs> name is Ali. My name is hey, Rev Ali. Ali. I'm gonna make sure I let you know who I am before I get checked. You know what I'm saying? Uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> Ali is my name. I'm down here in San Diego. I just want to ask you because I've been on your website, everything. I seen your YouTube videos, everything. I seen you got your Jordans. I just wanted to ask you <laughs> when you in the courtroom. When you in the courtroom with them Jordans on, do you be flying over them judges and prosecutors' heads? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I, um, I, I really don't even wear the Jordans to court anymore. Uh, these days in my career, I am more focused on, you know, being the, the Michael Jordan, which is, you know, making the, the, the plays and then, you know, letting my team assist kind of thing. So no, oh, okay, I don't, yeah. I don't, I don't. I don't really wear the Jordans to court anymore. <laughs> All right. Well, I appreciate you because when I saw that, I was like, man, I hope she's flying over these suckers, boy. Because I'm telling you, man, these courtrooms out here in California, man, these courtrooms out here, boys, are just wicked, very wicked. Well, I, I mean, we I got. I definitely do my thing. I definitely do my thing in the courtroom. <laughs> well, I will tell you what. Uh, if I ever see you, I'm gonna give you a number twenty three, and we gonna we gonna retire your jersey and continue to let you work, continue, continue to let you work on and do your thing to help the people to give them the information that they need. Because I'm telling you, boy, like you just said, you know, <clears throat> we always looking for somebody to save us when we can save ourselves. You right, know, I heard right, you right. say that, and you know, right. and that's 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 what a lot of we come into nowadays when we fight the the you know the you know industrial system. Uh, because mm-hmm. it's all it's all it's all trickery, man. And you know, a lot of times people, you know, they don't have jobs. Uh, and I'm not talking about the people that coming in with the Gucci jackets and stuff. But you know, even right. them, you know, they they even them they flossing too. You know, they ain't got no jobs yeah. and work. They just yeah. dressing nice, looking good, and they ain't got a dime in their pocket. But when you right. get into you know, but when we get into trouble as a as a community, you know, there's no jobs. That, you know, there's no way for us to pay for an attorney. You know, and so a lot of times, you know, we lose cases based yeah, right. on we we couldn't we couldn't we couldn't afford you know to get an attorney right. to represent and right. give ourselves a, a good defense or whatever right. it's civil civil criminal. But I appreciate what you're doing. You know, uh, we need a lot of people that with the knowledge to help us understand what's going on. We got cases against us, and and a lot of times we need to learn how to stand up for ourselves. It, it you know it's good like you said, go get an attorney. Because you're going to lose. You know, the judges respect attorney. They like to, you know, there's a court. They want to see an attorney over here, attorney over here, and I'm the judge. They don't want to see attorney over here and, and representing themselves over here. Like you said, they're a little lenient, but they'll let, that, they'll let that other attorney railroad you and run all over you, and you will lose. So, you know. Yeah, and, you know. and the thing about it, though, is it's a lot of behind the scenes. Like I tell my clients, you know, I have people come to me, oh, well, you ain't did nothing on my case because we ain't had court yet. You don't even understand. Once we're retained, that's when our time, you're paying for our time, you're paying for our knowledge, you're paying for the things we do behind the scenes. Once we're retained, we're calling the DA to try to work out your case. We're reviewing your file. We're doing the paperwork, reviewing the evidence. At Simmons Law, we have personal investigators of our own that we use to help our clients win our cases. So it's so much behind the scenes that you don't know if you're not a lawyer that you don't understand. The times that we're in court, that's just the formalities of what has been worked on behind the scenes. And I need people to understand that because a lot of times, People will come to um, black attorneys, minority attorneys, and again, they beg for what they need. And that is that does them a disservice because if we're giving a, a person a payment plan, now, now let's give that scenario. A person comes in, okay, um, you have two felonies, that's $10,000. We'll let you do a payment plan of 5000 and 5000 now they pay this five thousand, the first five thousand. Oh, they think they own you, right? 
So they're calling, they're doing all sorts of things that we, we don't need them to do at the, that point. Because once you've retained us, allow us to do our job. Now, when it's time to pay this other side, oh, well, can we pay next week? Oh, well, I had a family emergency. Oh, well, what can, can we, you know, it's all sorts of excuses. Then we have to be distracted by following in behind the money to fund your case versus us being able to focus on winning your case. Then it turns into we're not fighting, we're, we're now fighting for your case, and now we're fighting with you. And that, that sucks as a lawyer to be in that position where you have to invest energy into your client and fighting them when you're trying to fight for them. So those are things that wow. people that are not in the industry need to understand, especially in our community. But you'll go to a, a person outside of our community, you don't give them that flag. You don't give them that problem. You ain't trying to cuss them out because they're not answering every phone call, every second of the day when you try to reach them. You'll sell your mama's kidney to come up with the money to pay them. But you distrust us a lot of times until we're the last resort and we come in like superwoman and save y'all asses. Mm. Right on. You know what I'm saying? I hear you on that for <laughs> sure. You know what I'm saying? Because wow. <laughs> I know, I know right. it is. That's I mean, a lot, a lot of times, a lot of times people, you know, if they don't have any cases and then, you know, I've been through, I, I had several cases, criminal, civil, I mean, you could landlord, tenant, you know, a lot, all kind of stuff. And I understand the, the behind the scenes stuff. So, you know, I know to kick back and just get all the evidence that I need to help my case when my lawyer asks me for it. You know what I'm saying? So that's what I'll be doing. I don't really be bothering them. But I just want to say this last thing, and I'm going to shut up. Out here in California, there's attorneys that will take uh, retainer fees uh, and, and say there's 5000 You give them three grand, right? They don't even mm-hmm. show up to court. They won't even show up to court mm-hmm. for the day they're supposed to go to court. That's how they do it out here mm-hmm. in California. <laughs> so that, mm-hmm. you know, that when you're dealing with stuff like that, you're like, man, wait a minute, mm-hmm. man, I didn't get you three grand and you missed the court day? <laughs> mm-hmm. You know? So, you know, that's all. But I, I love you, sister. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Do your thing. I appreciate it. I hope you get more uh, uh, knowledge to be able to, uh, you know, really help people and, you know, not, not that you help not helping them now, but really help them more so. Because when we get older, we get wisdom, we get more knowledge, we find a lot of those behind the scenes things that we didn't know when we first started. You know, 10, 20, 30 years later, you know what I mean. So I can see that wisdom in you. I see that drive in you, and I hope you become, you know, something that you know, like a Johnny Cochran or something that people can use and go to out here to help their case, man, and win, and and most of all, stay out of trouble. Thank you. Thank you for calling. Thanks, Ali. Much love, bro. Um, Tiffany, I want to ask you this again, like I was saying before the callers, uh, I want to play devil, devil's advocate literally. Uh, since we spoke on how you have to deal with a lot of these cases, especially in the inner city, and I'm sure that's probably why you only deal with referral cases now. But uh, 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 what would you say is do you prefer better if you do? As far as I know you do entertainment uh practice entertainment uh law and criminal uh what would you prefer because i'm sure with the criminal it comes with a lot of stuff and when i say criminal again that's when i want to play devil's advocate how do you deal with choosing your cases and the clients that you choose knowing if you do know or not whether it's your job or not to represent a client that may be you don't you know what i mean that may be guilty or you know like i said devil's advocate how do you differentiate that part because I know that's tricky for a lawyer and the second part is do you prefer entertainment over criminal okay well you said like three questions in the one but okay, I don't know. I'm just <laughs> I'm trying to, try to I'm trying to, try to work with me Tiff. you know you I'm just a, you know okay. shit I'm trying to so make this said, professional as um, I can no, I mean, be you. Do you? It's okay. okay. okay, okay. We, we'll okay. we'll let the conversation flow how it needs to flow because that's going to be okay. honest Thank and you. and Thank what you. your your audience need to hear. So don't try to be right. something you're not. Just do you. Okay. We Thank could you. be talking Thank about you, West Coast music, really. I mean, that's what I thought you was <laughs> okay. going to eventually ask me. No, nah, I mean, yeah, but I'm trying to <laughs> be professional. Let me, let me I'm trying to really. This. <laughs> trying to be on point tonight, Tiffany. Come on now. Okay. Well, Go let ahead. me answer your question. As far as um, the thing about, you know, 
being selective with the cases, it's not necessarily um <sighs> It's not necessarily be you know because I deal with inner city stuff because I deal with more than that um you know right. I, I right now one of my larger cases is a wrongful death case. I have a a case that's been in the media you know against Morehouse College, so you know it's not necessarily a uh, I don't necessarily have a specific type of case that I like okay um okay. How I select cases, honestly, is um, I pray about it. I, I mean, it's just the energy that comes to me. For instance, the Morehouse case, when it came to me, someone came directly to me and asked me to be involved with that. After investigating the facts of the case, that's when I accepted moving forward with that. Um, okay. I evaluate cases based on a few different things. Um, as it relates to criminal defense, you mentioned how can I deal with someone that's, you know, possibly did a crime or whatever. Um, right. I am not there to judge anybody. I'm not there to judge if you did a crime. I'm there to defend you in the criminal justice system. I'm there to speak on your behalf. The state has mm-hmm. to prove that you committed a crime. The only thing that I ask from any of my clients whether it is a civil case or a criminal case or a business client or an entertainment client, whatever. I just ask for honesty and integrity and for you to pay your bill and listen to what I tell you. Because if you listen, we're going to win. We're going to get the result that you want as the client. So I don't care if you come in my office and say, Miss Simmons, I did the murder. What are we going to do? I'm going to say, okay, give me this 20 stacks. This is what we're going to (laughs) do. I'd rather you come in and say that versus you say, Miss Simmons, I didn't do it, but I get up there and I present my case to the jury and I find out a fact that bombs the case because you really did it. That is what I don't prefer to have as a client. I don't prefer to have a liar. I don't prefer to have clients that are disrespectful to me or to my staff. Um, I don't prefer to have clients that um, there is tension amongst me and the client because, again, I'm here to help you, not hurt you. And if there is tension amongst us, that's taken away from me being able to represent the client. So to answer your question, is, it, you know, it's a lot of factors that goes into how I select clients for myself and my team. Um, I can mm-hmm. even select a client. You know, there may be a client in an area that I don't particularly practice in because Simmons Law is a full service firm. The areas that mm-hmm. I particularly practice in are business, criminal defense, and entertainment. However, we do mm-hmm. personal injury. We do family law. We do a lot of other areas that other attorneys are the, the specialists at that, you know, are assigned to those cases. So with that being right. said, you know, I, I'm, I'm like the one that's the, I guess, the rainmaker, the one that vets out what is a good fit for the firm, and then we move forward from there. Right, right. And again, also, though, uh, with all that being said, for you to be undefeated over 10 years or however long you've been in practice, you, I'm sure you, again, have to kind of choose the cases you want to represent opposed to just taking any case for you to be still undefeated. Well, uh, the undefeated didn't, no, not really, because the undefeated didn't come from me choosing a particular case saying, oh, I know this will win at trial. For instance, one of my cases, um, the equipment 12, I talk about that case because we took that case to trial three times. Myself, um, veteran attorney, Shaveen King, um, veteran attorney Carla Walker, so it was a, it was a team effort. However, we took right. that case to trial three times. The first two times, it was a mistrial in our client's favor. The third time, it was a full acquittal of thirty three felony counts. So I don't I can't predict what's going to happen. I just know what has happened over ten years. Every single case that I have taken to trial, I have won. And that's just by the grace okay. of God. That's not a. That's not anything that I can predict because I don't know if right. if I'm going to take a case to trial. But when you prepare, and this is something for the young listeners that may be becoming lawyers, when you prepare for trial, prepare, prepare, prepare. When you practice, when you know the facts of your case, 
that's when you are going to win. When you connect with your jury, when you're good at what you're doing and thinking quick on your feet, when you know the rules of evidence, that's when you're going to win. So if you put in that work, the billionaire right, lawyer, right. shout out to, to Chris Stewart. That's a lawyer I know, billionaire attorney. He got a billionaire verdict on a rate trial. Um, the, the great attorneys such as him, such as myself, such as Johnny Cochran, it's preparation. It's putting in that work. It's, put, it's doing it when we don't feel like it. It's showing up when we right. hurt. It's showing up through the, for that battle every single time. And that's how the win happens. It's not me right. trying to decipher through a certain type of case. Okay. Okay. And also, uh, I want to ask you, what I ask you, uh, what do you prefer? Well, I'm sure that's nothing you can, you know, you have to take whatever, you know, you take. But what do you uh, like or prefer, like I said again, better entertainment or criminal over, you know, the course of your history, what you've dealt with? What would you say that you uh, like better if, if I like yeah, both. If at all. Um, okay. I mean, I like both. I, I like I love the streets, but the streets don't love nobody back. So for right. me, I've had to pull away from criminal cases just because of my emotional and mental health and my personal safety, you know, concerns. But the entertainment side, it's exciting to be able to use my creative side. But mm-hmm. I do so much outside of um, the lawyer in entertaining myself, sometimes that's difficult because when you're representing a star, they want to be the star. They don't want to see their lawyer as the star, you know? So right, that right, is, right. you know, that sometimes is a double edged sword. But again, I, but I keep moving forward. I the, keep doing the things that I do. Right. Um, um, not to cut you off, I want to ask you would you say that was a challenge for you dealing with these entertainment cases as opposed to the criminal? Uh, either way, I don't know which one you've dealt with more, but did you find that more of a challenge to deal with that entertainment side where you had to ex- explore, you know, challenges and, like you said, bring different things out of yourself to represent this client or maybe the client be a star or, you know, change different tactics? Was that more of a challenge for you opposed to the criminal aspect? No, no. It's the same stuff. It's the same game, just different people, different players. It's the same thing um, as a, a lawyer or as a woman, even in the entertainment industry, you're in a male dominated field. So it's always the show and prove. It's, it's the always you're going to run into people that's going to test you or try you or just want to date you or sleep with you or, or those sorts of things. That's the same thing right. that I would experience in other arenas. So, no, right. it's no different. Um, the challenges are all the same. But the, the see. The blessing is when your challenges starting to get different, when you experience mm-hmm. different challenges, that's when you know you're leveling up. But if you keep experiencing right. the same things over and over and over, that means you need to grow or learn something out of that. So, you know, right. I, I'm not mad at, at anything that I experience. The challenges that I'm experiencing, especially within the last year, um, a lot of stuff has been great my way. I mean, I was even named... Um, one of the Atlanta's top attorneys by Rolling Out Magazine, and we had a ceremony um, a, yeah. a couple months back. So there have been a lot of great things going on. And I can say throughout that, a lot of the challenges that I face have been different. So I'm happy about that. That means that there's growth somewhere. Right, right, right. Exactly. Um, um, I had a question from a caller out there. My bro, CeeLo, wanted me to ask you, what's your opinion on the uh, uh, April uh, Geiger case? You know, the lady in Dallas, Texas, uh, who killed the black yeah. man in his house. Um, what, what's your, my what's your thoughts on that? My opinion on that is that um, if it doesn't make sense, it's probably not true. And there is no way in hell that she should have been a um, – police officer and you don't know where your apartment is that story is unbelievable i don't know what her motive uh was in that and actually you can check out some of my opinion on our youtube blog channel because i was on law and crime speaking about that that's a a trial watch show and i think um i also was on um, one of my last episodes of court tv i spoke about Mm -hmm. that trial as well because we did a trial watch 
So again, check right. out our uh, blog on YouTube. Um, and some of the clips are also on our official Simmons Law Instagram channel or page as well. But that's my opinion. If it doesn't make sense, it's probably not true. And I think that she should have gotten more time. I think that. Yeah, I was going to ask judged, you what he thought about um, the sentence. Because they, 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 yeah, they, they found her guilty for time. murder. But, yes, she only gets 10 years and it's lenient and the judge is over here hugging her and the bailiff is giving her a bite. I mean, it was just, it was just like well, the, great. The I mean, I can understand was, the. Okay, go ahead. The bailiff was doing, the bailiff was actually checking her hair for any contraband. That's what that was. But as far okay. as the judge, I do feel the judge, um, her behavior was the very black inappropriate. Judge at that. I've never, I've yeah. never had a judge hug a defendant or any of that. And even if you felt convicted or felt like, you know, uh, God forgave her, okay, God can forgive her, but you're you going to do this jail time. I mean, why right. why would you hug someone that murdered someone? Are you hugging the, the family of the young man who is now murdered because he testified against Amber Geiger? Are you over their house right. hugging them? So I was right. disgusted by that behavior. I was disgusted by that case. Um, I'm disgusted by people that are, um, are so afraid of beautiful brown skin. Right. Right. Exactly. Um, where do you see uh where do you see the justice system going as far as this because this is not the first we just heard of a new case of a another officer in Texas, Fort Worth I believe, who murdered a lady in yep. her own house. You know, yes. where where do you see this going with, with the justice system as far as the police because we're seeing it case after case after case. I mean, so many and so many even though we got a conviction in the in the Geiger case in Dallas there's so many others that 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 passed and and police officers are, are found innocent and and then we're still still hearing ca- new cases. Where do you see this going in that aspect of where that is with the law and citizens? Because that seems to be a real problem, not with the law and citizens, but black citizens. Because we see time and time after again where you know uh, and again I'm not being prejudiced or anything, but 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 white people. Who uh or, or just anybody else? Period. Who the same tactics are not taken. They do different restraints and find different ways to settle the situation. But when it's a black person, uh, uh black men and uh specifically they're murdered time after time, and then the police officers are found found innocent. You know where do we see this going in the future, and how does that give young black men, you know, hope or anything, or just p- our system hope? You know when uh, we want to deal with the justice system. Well, that system was not made for us. It wasn't made for minorities. So to be honest, um, my opinion is I do see that it's going to be changed or dismantled or, or revised or, or in a different order. I see it changing in a different direction. I don't know what direction. I don't know how. But um, it goes back to what I said earlier. We just have to focus on putting more positive out than the negative. As it relates to our right. community or black men, um, again, we have to save ourselves. Stop looking for that system to accept us and create your own system. There are so many black right. men that I know that are um, they are grown in age, but they are still young in mind. They are still right. young in emotion. Exactly. And the only thing yeah. that I can share with them Um, as black men, I can, you know, love you as your sister, um, you know, on this earth or as a woman or whatever. But at the end of the day, you have to save yourself. You have to get around the resources. Like what I would like to see more of is more of the black men in the community supporting each other, um, holding each other accountable to being better. Um, What, and, and what I, want to add to that is I know a lot of resources that do that now that have like, you know, um, they're the firm called the Davis Bozeman firm in Atlanta, Georgia. They have, um, I think it's called the black men think tank or something like that, where they even, um, mentor young men, but then they have stuff for, uh, you know, adult men to be a part of. Right. And so right. I think it just takes a transformation from all of us so we can, be stronger and united together as we deal with the forces that we can't control. 
because the justice system or some of the things that are happening with these police, that's out of our control. But there are things within our right. control that we can do right. within our communities to make us better, to make us stronger, you know? Right. And um, I'm glad you said that because I want to ask you as well, since I spoke with the justice system, the police, again, it's it's us who have to do better as well. What do we do about, uh, I mean, there's no answer, but what do you think about as far as the communities and like, because another troubling thing is that we see not only with the police, but we see especially our youth right now, uh, a lot of the youth, you know, in all of these communities are really lost and, and the shit is like, I mean, we've always seen it, but we see it going to a different level where you see, you know, kids are with the carjacking and robbing, but not only do they rob, but they rob innocent women and, you know, stuff that's outside yeah. the boundaries. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah. and we see this and that's going on. They don't so, even know the street code. They don't even know the street code. Right, and right. that's just what it is. They don't even know, you know, they don't even have respect. It's a respect thing. It's a how you move thing. Yeah. It's an integrity thing. Right. You know, um, a lot of people who, you know, may have looked up, and I'll use Nipsey as an example. I mean, yeah, he was a person that, you know, had street the stuff that he did, but he ran by a code. He had integrity. Right. And a lot of people don't right. have that. A lot of the young men that are doing stuff like that, they don't. They just don't have that in them. And that's something that, you know, it can be taught. That, um, you know, because it was taught to me. A lot right. of stuff, you you know, that you learn, you learn from your OGs. You learn from people that's around you. And so they need right. to get around some better OGs that's really teaching them something instead of the stupid stuff. Because you're right. The respect for women and children has been lost. And if you're yeah. if you're if, if if that's lost, then you have nothing because we are the mothers of, of society. So if you lose right. in the vessel that got to create the babies, what what's going to happen? Right. Exactly. And, you know, so I had to speak on that because we're speaking about justice, but we have to start within as well. And that's a big problem right now. That, like these youth right now are just on a whole nother level. You know what I mean? As far as how they get down and, and, you like you said, the respect is just not there. You know what I mean? And um, and and it, I know it's a deeper root than that. It goes back to how some of these uh, inner city youth are raised. They're being raised different. They weren't raised how we were raised, and you know it's just a different time, man. But I know it's hard to find the answers to that. But we have to, you know, at least talk about it because that's a big problem as well. And that's the reason why a lot of these police are just killing black men because really they just scared of them, man. You know what I mean? A lot of these police, even though they're supposed to be trained and all of this, they scared of these young dudes, man. When they see a young black man, they scared, so they pulling out their gun first before they try to reason and and um, you know, and, you know, get the situation, you know, under control, which they're trained to do. That's my problem because they're trained to do it. But uh, I think they're just scared. You know what I mean? So that's a problem as well. Well, so, if, you, you know, if you're scared, then you don't need to. If you're scared, then you don't, you don't need, need to be no, no uh, damn police cop. officer. You don't for need real. to be no police for real. officer. If you that scared that's of a human about. body. You don't need to be right. a police officer because that's a bunch of right. bullshit. What are you scared of? But but what are you scared but that's of? The problem. Then how are but, you but look, scared I think, of? But but look, but look, not to cut you off, Tiff, but I think that's a problem as well because you see, even being in Atlanta, you see all these police uh, 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 precincts that have job openings, and, and they don't really require much. As long as you got a diploma, no felonies, they take you. So they're taking in people and then and then you're putting these a lot of these people from way out here, that's a problem as well. These white officers or whoever into a uh inner city community that they know nothing about. You know what I mean? And then they may just be on the force, you know what I mean, whatever and they don't know anything about it. that's a problem too, how they recruit these officers. I, I think. Yeah, I mean it, it again, it goes back to Chick what I'm deep. saying of Focusing on the things that you can do. Um, for example, right. know your know your neighbors, know your neighborhood. Um, the person who called the non emergency nine one one number on the young lady in Fort Worth. I mean, how much more could it have been if he knew them enough to just knock on the door and say, "Hey, y'all good over here," right, versus right, right. calling an outsider to come and the outsider kills her within four seconds. How can you make a judgment yeah, of four yeah, seconds yeah. Right, within right, four right, seconds right. that this person is a threat in their own home, in an open carry state? So it doesn't matter if a gun was on her dresser. What threat was she? What threat was that? A gun on her right. dresser inside her house. 
So again, right. it's right. no but, excuse. It goes back to what you said. It's just they are choosing to want to be afraid of brown skin or minority skin for whatever reason. And that's unfortunate for them. Yeah, yeah. And, and another important thing you said was uh, community. You know, uh, nowadays, even in the black communities, wherever you live at, the, the, it's not like it was back in the day where the community and the neighborhood knows each other. You could be living next door to somebody and you don't even speak to them. They don't speak to you. You don't know each other. So like you said, if a situation comes uh, comes about, they don't even know how to deal with it. They'll just call the police or whatever instead of going to you personally. You know what I mean? So that's a problem as well where our own community don't, uh, you know, interact or respect each other or don't give a damn, period. Nowadays, don't nobody give a damn about nobody if it ain't got nothing to do with them. Yeah, some people you are know? like that, but, again, you have to look for the positive. The more positive you look for, the more you'll see it. I mean, I know in my area, I speak to my neighbors. I talk to them. I went across the street. Hey, um, I'm Tiffany, Attorney Simmons, blah, 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 all of that, because I wanted to instill that for my community. So you just got to do right. what you can. And that, you know, even to your listeners, just do what you can within your community, within your family. Start where you at. Hell, learn to get along with your family. Learn to respect just your own family. It's people that don't even right, respect right. their own family members. So start right, there. Right. If you want to do something different, a lot of the things that I do, it is to change the next generation. This shit ain't comfortable. It don't always feel right. good. It don't. I'm used to dysfunction. I'm used to fighting or, or communicating with your hands. I'm commu- I'm used to a lot of stuff. <laughs> but right, that right. ain't good for the next generation. No, I'm being serious because somebody might right, need to right. hear that. I'm, right. I'm, I've been in, I'm used to, you know, toxic situations that was normal, but it really ain't normal. It ain't the best thing. Right, right. And people got to just, exactly. people um, got to learn to love themselves a lo- enough or love they, they families enough or love their children enough or love their partner enough to want to have different in their life. Right, right, right. Um, Tiff, I want to ask you one more thing on the legal side. We spoke about, uh, I want to piggyback off of this since we spoke about it, the homie Nipsey, rest in peace. Uh, another thing on the legal side, what do you think about uh, that case that's going on with, with, with the homie Nip and uh, surrounding that case and the the defendant and whatever is going to go on with that or so far what's going on with that? What do you think about that case, your opinion, if you have one? Um, I don't have an opinion because I haven't watched his trial or or looked at the case. Um, the only opinion that I have in regards to Nipsey is that um, I appreciate his energy. Um, before he passed away, um, it was a couple of times I reached out to the Marathon store because, like I said earlier, I do stuff outside of being the lawyer. Um, in LA related to other right. business endeavors that I want to do. Um, and I didn't get the chance to connect with him, but just, um, you know, I appreciate the energy that he had shared with the, the world and, you know, my extended condolences and um, support to his family, to his loved ones, um, Lauren. Um, when he passed away, my heart hurt for her as a woman. Because you, right. when you experience true or unconditional love or a love that's different than what you've ever experienced, that's a that's something um, that is is God sent. That's magical, and you know even as it relates closer to home, the funeral I went to today, my heart mourned for his wife. They had just got married right. within a month. That man's birthday is in in two days. And they mm-hmm. were in the prime of their relationship. They had, you know, beautiful children that they were raising. So my heart hurts for the women that have to endure the pain of, of losing their, their partner, their mate, um, the person that protected them. Um, right. Because strong women, we need covering, too. We need protection, too. So, you know, that's all my opinion on that. I don't have an opinion on the, the legal case. 
Okay. And really, that's what I wanted you to speak on, Nip. You know, I just brought the legal thing because you're a lawyer. You know, I don't, like you said, have a point either way on the case either. I think it is what it is. You know, I hate that we even got to go through the legal phase of it when we know what it is. But, uh, you know, I just wanted you to speak on that. Uh, much respect. Um, what I want to do, I want to take a quick break, and then uh, we have a few minutes left. I want to come back, take a couple more callers, and um, wrap it up. You know, but let me take a quick okay. break, and we'll come right back. We have the lovely Miss right. Tiffany Simmons from Simmons Law Firm here live with us on Westside Wednesdays. The G. Lou Show, sponsored by 93.3 Tweed FMism and BTP Media Group. We will be right back. I'm a person that I feel like I rather live my purpose than live a job or a career. With Simmons Law and the other things that I'm involved in, this is my purpose. So I'm inspired by getting up every day and knowing that I'm going to do something different to help someone else. I'm inspired by the fact that I know that I'm using my God-given um, abilities and talents and skills to offer something to the world. At Simmons Law, we are undefeated. I've never lost a trial, civil or criminal. So that means that I've earned the bag that you have to pay me. So if you want the Louis V. Illegal, call Simmons Law, 404-461-8422. Or follow us on the web, www.slfirmllc.com. Follow us on ID if you one of the youngins at Official Simmons Law. That's where you'll see the most recent info. You'll see videos. You'll see the stuff that we're doing in the community. Okay? All these niggas with this 
bullshit, man. Fuck these niggas, man. He's sick. We ain't worried about none of these motherfucking busters. You understand me? From the overhill to the front to the back, man. We're pushing this line to the time. So don't worry about none of this shit. Just funny ass niggas. Don't worry about him calling you and all the rest of that shit. You know what? It's his loss. You know what I'm saying? I'm pretty pee. I heard the homie, the homie called me and was like, man, Janae tripping, man, this bust ass thing got her mind fucked up. I'm like, no, not Janae. And fuck that nigga, man. Nay, nay, you hit me, I got you. You understand me? These niggas is busted. Fuck that nigga and fuck his friends and fuck his bitch. He's nothing, my nigga. You are the one. Everybody else is two and three. You're the one. I love you. Make sure you hit me back. This is your big brother, you hear me? This is corrupt. Got it. Hey, call me soon as you get this, you hear me? Don't make me call your mama now, I'll track you down. Sounds get laid down on West Side Wednesdays, OG Sundays, Flashback Fridays. We're cruising with G. Lou, fabulous lowrider oldies. So just let me introduce myself. I'm Tweet Cadillac, baby. I took up all the Hennessy you got on your shelf. We got to keep it fly, P.I., and you know why. Hey, it's the G. Lou Show, West Side Wednesdays, back with my special guest, Miss Tiffany Simmons, a.k.a. Simmons Law. SL yep, I'm here. LLC.com, <laughs> all of that right there. Follow her on Instagram, Twitter, you know, all of those handles right there. She's there, man, and uh, we definitely appreciate her once again for joining us tonight. Anybody else who has questions uh, that you need answers, you can press 1 or you can call 914-803-4001. We're here for your service. Uh, Tiffany, um, um, you know, we talked all this legal stuff and all of that right there, man, but uh, tell us what what you do for fun because I see you, you you definitely know how to incorporate everything in your life and make it all you know uh come together like a triangle but you definitely enjoy yourself as well so what do you do for fun and how do you uh when is it good for you to have fun and and you know how do you how do you make it all work with your well, business I incorporate schedule fun, um I incorporate fun in everything that I do, honestly. But as far as my downtime, I love spending time with my family. Um, Family is big to me. Um, You know, one day I'll start a family of my own, but I love spending time with my dad and just laughing and, you know, joking about everything. Um, I like fishing. If you check out the blog, you'll see me fishing with um, Fishing for Hip Hop. Mozam, it's a show. He just won an award for his film, Fishing with Hip Hop, or Fishing for Hip Hop. I'm sorry. Um, I like traveling. I like doing stuff that is in an adventure. So, you know, I'm right. with the jet skis. I'm with the four wheelers. I'm with all the shit. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Hey, and I know you travel a lot and you go to a lot of different places, cities and different mm-hmm. places. What are some of your uh, more favorite places to frequent? Uh, I like places that have a beach and that are warm. So, of course, I love West Coast. Like I say, I'll be in Cali October 29th. Um, i actually be in uh, Chicago on Saturday for the grand opening of an art exhibit called Give Thanks a great artist that I actually grew up on the same neighborhood with, um, J.A. Metcalf. He's the artpreneur. His uh, art exhibit is called Give Thanks and Ode to Gratitude. So if you're in Chicago this weekend, meet me there, 6.30 p.m., CC's Art Garage. So um, I love going to Chicago as well. But I, I'm, I'm just a traveling girl, so I don't, I don't have a favorite spot, but I, I love to travel, period. <laughs> right, right. That's right. I see you a lot. You know, you're all over the place. So, uh, salute to that. Uh, I want to ask you as well, um, being that you travel a lot, but uh, how is it uh, back when you go home? Um, w- what's going on in your community these days, and what do you do to give back to the community or help in any kind of way that you can in uh, the great city of Grand Rapids, Michigan, home of Tiffany Simmons well, and Floyd Mayweather, may I add? 
Yeah, home of uh, Marvin Sapp as well, home of uh, okay. the DeBarge family. So yeah, okay, come on now, grace. come on now. Yeah, it's a lot come of grace that come out of Grand Rapids. Um, as far okay. as the uh, hometown, to be quite honest, Atlanta is really my hometown now. I mean, I've been in Atlanta right. more years of my life than I was in in Grand Rapids, Michigan. But when I do right. go home. The last time I was home, I actually did a book signing at Lotus Bud. That's a, a local restaurant there that is owned by a friend of mine. So shout out to Mikey. I hope you are recovering well because he just uh, had got a, into a car accident. So I definitely hope you're recovering well. But he's the owner of Lotus Bud. I did a book signing of my fourth book, The Plus Lawyer. You can grab that. Grab Law and Family Order as well. Amazon, Kindle, Barnes & Noble. Go ahead and grab that book. Because when the movie come out, you're going to want to know what happened in Uh-oh. the book. So you better get that Uh-oh. book. Um, so, yeah, I did a book signing there. Um, when I'm home, I definitely try to connect with the community that, <coughs> excuse me, the community that raised me, you know, until I was 17. So, because I still got family there. Shouts out to my family mm-hmm. in Grand Rapids, Michigan. That's what's up. Shout out to Grand Rapids. And um, now... Um, as far as what's going on now, tell everything, tell everybody what you got going on now, what's going on in the future, what can we expect? You hinted at a movie, documentary. I know you have all of your books. Please plug those as well. But let us know what's coming up in the future for Tiffany Simmons. <laughs> New shit on the way in my bankroll, fresh voice. <laughs> okay. New houses okay. on the way. New cars on the okay. way. New jewelry on the way. And just uh, <laughs> new smiles on okay. the way. But nah. What's really on the way, honestly, is just me focusing um, more on continuing to run the business of Simmons Law as a well-oiled machine, doing the things outside of Simmons Law that I do as the plug lawyer, meaning more books are going to be released soon. Um, I'm working more on the fitness side of myself, so I have some collabs that's coming up with a couple different, you know, fitness um, situations, so that's something that I'm excited about. I'm excited about doing more with me painting because I like to paint myself. So I have some art things that I'm working on as well as me just being, um, becoming a better musician as a violinist. Uh-oh. So, you know, okay. just pay attention. I'm, I'm investing in we me. We can't expect so no mixtape. You ain't going to get on the mic no time soon. Can we expect a I, Tiffany I, Simmons mixtape? I might be. <laughs> you might hear the Plug's lawyer. I mean, it's the Plug's lawyer. I hear lawyer. it in you. you might, I know you, you got it in you. It. You might hear it. I know you got I, it in who you. Who knows? I mean, I, I work with a lot of writers. I work with musicians. And I, I like to create stuff. So if you do hear it, don't be surprised because it's just a part of me being creative. And that doesn't take away from me as the lawyer. That doesn't take away from me as the woman, the wife to be, the, the whatever to be. That doesn't take away from that. That just enhances. Because right. we are here to do big things. And every day above the ground, you win and then you got a chance to do something. So, so make the best right. of your time and forget what everybody else says. Because some people just say that you can't do it because they don't see themselves doing something. Right, exactly, exactly. And you spoke on the wife to be soon. What, what, what's going on in the Tiffany personal side? Can not not to put nothing out there, but uh, what, what's going on on the personal side? Can we, you know, because you're a young lady and beautiful young lady. I'm sure it's a lot of you know uh, uh, people uh, on the waiting list. What we got going on in Tiffany Simmons' personal life? You know what I mean? What's going on with that? Um, that's between me, them, and God. <laughs> but I am okay. single until I'm married. And right now I'm not okay. married. So I'm single until I'm married. And that's just that on that in my life can keep your mm. voice. <laughs> mm, 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 mm. Okay. 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 <laughs> that's what's up. That's what's up. Well, um, I do want to say again, thank you for joining us. It was a great episode, man. It was like, this was a real good episode, you know, uh, and I'm glad we got to touch on a lot of different things, legal, personal, you know, and just 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 life period. You know, it was a great episode, and I thank you, Tiffany, again for joining our, our platform again and uh, sharing your story and life and time with us. We really appreciate it, Tiffany. Uh, you're a family, friend, family of the show, and you can come back anytime and uh, 
you know, I'm um, going to share all your handles and everything. And uh, you need to plug those books again. Make sure everybody goes and gets all of those books she has. And uh, follow her on Instagram and all of her handles. Yep. And uh, give, give them the number uh, and the official website. Official Simmons Law. Um, Instagram, Official Simmons Law, The Plus Lawyer, That's Law eBook. Those are all resources. If you follow The Plus Lawyer, don't judge my law firm off of my page. I'm going to just tell you that right now <laughs> because I am an attorney, but I'm also an <laughs> author. I'm also an actor, and I'm also a model. So don't judge me by that. If you do, then just get off my page. And you're please. human, and you're human. Um, you're right, human. You're, right. You're, you're able to um, live your life. You don't have to be a certain way, and I appreciate that. Go ahead. Exactly. Um, you can call us at the office, call or text 404-461-8422. You can check out our blog, simmonslawblog.wordpress.com. You can check out the blog, Tiffany Simmons, on YouTube. Uh, we we out there. We out there. Mm -hmm. And if you want to join the team, Team Simmons Law, Team The Plugs Lawyer, you can email your resume to thepluglawyer at gmail.com. If you are a bride-to-be or know a bride-to-be, tell her enter the Say Yes to the Dress Simmons Law Contest. We got into the end of this week to pick the beautiful bride that will win that beautiful dress that I modeled um check out check out the info on the page but they will just email t uh the plug lawyer at gmail.com as well so we out there we spreading love we spreading good legal legal info and we spreading laughter comedy and some uh pretty faces <laughs> uh make sure you put that out there you know what i'm saying um uh, and and Tiffany, is there anything else that we did not speak on that you want to get out there to let the people know that I didn't address or you didn't address earlier? Um, no, we we talked about everything, and uh, I'm grateful for the people that um, called in. I appreciate all the callers who called in and had some great things to say. I appreciate you supporting the campaign of your girl because. Um, it's not a sprint, it's a marathon. And, and you know, as you said, the mar marathon continues. If you in L.A., the week of October 29th, hit your girl up. Tell me where the party's at for Halloween <laughs> because I want to spend Halloween in L.A. So let me know where the mm. party's at. Okay, okay, there it is. Tiffany Simmons, official Simmons Law Firm. Follow her, get at her if you have any legal needs, anything, man. Just follow the movement, man, because it's a marathon, not a sprint, and she's definitely running her marathon. I want to thank you again. It's a definitely an honor. This is homie right here, homegirl I've known for many years, and, again, I'm proud. I can't say it enough. I told you last time, and um, I'm very proud of you, and, and, you know what I mean, love you, and continue much success and everything. You're definitely an in, in, in inspiration to not only me, but everybody. I'm sure you heard the love tonight. And I'm sure young ladies across the world that follow you, you're an inspiration and keep doing what you do. And we got your front, back, and your side, like my homie say, man. And, and we got we just got much love for you, Tiff. Keep doing it to the fullest. You know? All right. Thank you. Y'all have a good night. All right, Tiff. Good night. Thank you. It's Westside Wednesdays, the G. Lou Show. Tiffany Simmons, man, great episode. Hope everybody enjoyed it. We're here in the after hours. You want to hang out with me, we'll be here playing some good music. Shout out to my sponsors once again, 93.3 Tweet, FMism, BTP Media Group, Westside Car Club, the homie Snow. Shout out to the lovely Miss Queen G, my co-host tonight and Fridays. Check us out Friday. We got a special guest. Also, let me say this. We got some big stuff coming up November, December, we got Houdini coming up to Flashback Fridays. We got Ice T coming to West Side Wednesdays. We got Roxanne Shante, the real Roxanne. We got uh man, I don't even like Tweet say if I keep talking, I'm gonna be bragging. But make sure you tune in tomorrow night to Tweet Cadillac Show. I'll be there with him. Same time, same place on ninety three point Tweet FM Ism. We got some good stuff we're bringing to you, man. So stay tuned in, man, and um just keep rocking with us. It's West Side Wednesdays, the G Loose Show. Where they do it at. Hey, this is Queen Jean. What it do? It's that time for a fabulous West Side Wednesday vibe on the G. Lou Show. Sit back and enjoy the view where they're doing it at. Everybody, man. Everybody, man. <laughs>
is uh, Big D, man. You're not tuned in to OG Sunday. You know what I mean? On the D-Loop show, man. You know, Low Rider, you know what I'm saying? OG, the man. Um, I just want to give a shout out. You know, shout out to you, man. You know, G-Loop. Um, I know this is the uh, 300 episode, man. This is a big thing, man. It's just, um, you know, Shout out to you, man, just for, uh, you know, putting it out there, man, just for doing real shit, man, all right? Pick up you, man, OG, you know, Sunday, G. Lou, I'm out, man. Bring them bitches in. know the show that I'm from. Me, I know what I smell, man. Just make it sit low. Just for the bitches. Hey, bitch. Hey, I'm fresh out some pussy. I ain't worried about that now. Since a young cat, I've been slinging rap. Rolling blunts to the chronic to relax. Buying shit from the swap for the low. They send it back. No, they gon' I'm so cool, check the YouTube Niggas wish they could move like I move I'm cool with this count Flying in my Lolo Hand on the wood grain Out for the popo The twin call snow Get a sack and get mountaintop high Every day fly live Every day fly live like the wings on an eagle I done cop the new money and chop the top off it Ball. My essay say damn pimp your loco Must everything be polo down to the flow though I'm a, I'm a, I'm a pimp hand cold bitch cold. Like the top of the mountain where the snow is Right, right. smoking, joking, having fun Let me show you something baby You know the streets that I'm from Do you know what I'm talking about The switches make you sit low just for the bitches. Hey, just for the bitches. Jumped off the flight. Back in the NC. From LA Cali. Still rolling low, low, you see. After light, hit the right switch. Three wheels, see the right bitch. Then I smash, hit the gas. Off oh, to get some more ass. Cause that's what we do when we're rolling in the lolos in the true blue snow. Ro- man. Rolling in the lolos in the true blue snow, man. Still saying the same. You know the name. Check the plaque in the back window. West side is the name. Catch us on the streets. Staying with them heats in the back. Eight batteries in the trunk. Four dumps. Make them jump. 72 inches in the cush. Yeah, you know what you want. Puppy from the old school LA Dream Team, and we in the house. Thanks for tuning in to G Lou Show on West Side Wednesdays, hosted by G Lou, our sponsors BTP Media and 93 Tweed FM. Ism.
the switch, make it lift at the right. Drop the ass down low, make a left at the light. We the light, plus the life for the party. Smart boy, BBC, what's up with party? Spice rum, homie, make your body numb. Look, mama, break it down, make your booty go dumb. I'm the one, the two and the three. California love, part four, do you agree? OG with the keys to the city in the 430 S type in, sit pretty. Roll some up, let the world smoke with me. For the love in the air, we done lost too many. Penny for your thoughts, never thought I'd get it right. Living my life under the street lights. Yeah. I'm sure we're Three, 81 degrees, still blowing AC. Baby, it's a vibe, we ride and play for keeps. Take your mind on the spiritual high, this shit's deep. Word on the streets, we legendary and reap. The fruits of our labor that we able to eat. Started with a dream, but made it reality. The makings of a man, we planted the whole seed. Rooted out the ground, we found the whole tree. Now we sit crown and wrap around the beat. Shout out to the homies that came in before me. We laid the foundation, now we able to see. Homie, I'm a G with an O in the front. 16 switches to the gates for pump. Humps in the trunk, bumping underground pump. I'm an underground legend, ain't a question, I'm the one. Self made, so I hustle and I motivate. In the 10th grade, had an old school 88. In the 11, had a 7 deuce coupe. Glass out Chevy, in the game real heavy. Already I was living under street lights. Only 15, homie, living that street life. It's like a natural cause, it's the effect. In the city, fascination that draws us to the set. On the set, I'm a rep to the fullest. Change the game, no, cause ain't no names on the bullet. I'm too blessed to be stressed, so I gotta speak truth to the youth to solidify my rep. Better yet, I'ma do it for the coast. California love part four, let's make a toast. From South Central to the Southern Carolinas. On the street lights is where you find us. Yeah. Hey, this is Young Drew, a.k.a. Atlas and Smoke, affiliate of OG Music, and you're tuned in to the G.R.U. Show. Make sure to tune in to OG Sunday, Westside Wednesday, my comrade, G. Lou. It's going down. His request number is 914-803-4001. Listen to him live. Listen to me live at 347-855-8436. You want to know about my life, my experience, my progression? Hit me up on TweetCatLife.com. Hey, before I continue, I want to give a special shout-out to my girl, Dee Dee Harrison, a.k.a. Pamela in L.A. What's up, baby? Much love to you. And shout-out to the homegirl, Jane, as well. Shout-out to the Reverend Ali, and shout-out to our sponsors again. It's the G. Lou Show, Westside Wednesdays, where they do it at. All right, let me see y'all motherfucking hands right there. Hold on, Stone. Hold on, Stone. Hold on, Stone. Yeah, yeah. Hold on, come back out here. Yeah, yeah. Y'all make some motherfucking noise for my day one homeboy in from James Stone. Thank y'all. Thank y'all. The marathon continues. Victory lap tonight, though. Victory lap tonight, yeah. though. Let's tonight, go. Tonight, though. Fold or step up to the plate When it's your time to bat you Show them that you great Life is what you make I hope you make a movement I hope your opportunity Survives the opportunity Dreams, goals, aspirations Dedicated, fuck how long it take We never waited, we elevated Thought we was gonna stop We accelerated Through all the ups and downs We been through At least we made it Jealous niggas hated And the police raided Took a nigga from the block To the police station we wrote it all down, nigga, we mapped it out Niggas jealous cause they wanna rap, what's that about? Niggas wanna bang for the clout, what's that about? Been from the gang, get some shit I never rap about Just some young niggas tryna make it out On the road to riches, they was lost, we had a paper route Damn, I wish Nip and Fast was here How y'all die at 30-something after banging all them years? You know what we live by, nigga, we ain't had no fear All this money, power, fame still can't make y'all reappear Somehow I'ma keep this marathon going I know now it's on me, plus I'm God's chosen I know it's a lot of niggas not going Just like I know it's a lot of trades that's not rolling 
both of y'all tell me keep this shit flowing. Who the fuck you thought gon' keep this shit going? Me, copy, Pac-Man, Black Sam, Cus Capone, Killer Twan, BH, and A Dam. Hoggy left some blue faces in your casket. Adam left you a backwood roll, hella fat. I left a blue rag in the all money hen hat. YG bought an ace of spades, I poured Cleek K. We took you through the whole LA, it was nip day. Obama wrote you a letter, what more can I say? Stevie Sun got your funeral, nigga, you the great. The marathon continues, that's what you would say. Hey, so look, hold on, hold on one second. I'ma tell you something about me and this nigga J-Storm. We used to sell fake dope. Real shit. Real shit. Just so we can get our little 2 for 15 wigs shot. And go back in the studio and make records. I used to be this nigga engineer on Monday. And he'll rap. He'll be my engineer on Tuesday and I'll rap. I'm just saying that to sell y'all. Staying down, hard work can go a long way. Make some noise for my nigga one more time. Hey, right, now listen. Salute. Street Science, you're on here. What do you feel when you hear a record like Tupac's new one? I love Tupac's new record. Right, but don't you feel like that creates uh, tension between East and West? He's talking about killing people. I had sex with your wife, and not in those words. But, he, but he's talking I about, I want to see you deceased. Live and die in L.A. Where every day we try to fatten our pockets Us niggas hustle for the cash so it's hard to knock Everybody got their own thing coming to chasing Worldwide through the hard times, worrying faces Shed tears as we bury niggas close to heart Or was a friend that would ghost in the dark Cold part about it, nigga got smoked by a fiend Try to floss on him, blind to a broken man's dream A hard lesson, court cases, keeping guessing Flea bargain ain't an option now, so I'm stressing Cost me more to be free than a life in the pen Making money off of cuss words like the game Learn how to think ahead so I fight with my pen Late night down sunset like in the sin What's the worst they can do to a nigga got me lost in hell To live and die in the lake on bail my hands No stranger, full of drama like a soap opera On the curb, watching the ghetto bird helicopters I observe so many niggas getting three strikes Off the jail, it's where the head right across from hell I can't cry, cause it's home now I'm just a nigga on his own now Living like thug staff So I can't smile, writing to my peoples When they ask for pictures Thinking Cali just fun and bitches <laughs> Better learn about the dress code B all the mother niggas copycats, these are jeans. I love Cali like I love women. Cause every nigga in LA got a little bit of thug in them. We might fight amongst each other, but I promise you this. We'll burn this bitch down, get us pissed. To live and die in LA. Got some hats, took a stash, left the rest for me. Neck bone, trade, hair on, 
one she two. Big rock got knocked, but this one's to you. I hit the studio and drop a drew, hoping it's heck. Get high, watch some time block to live and die in LA. For 92.3, 106, all the radio stations that be bumping my shit, making my shit sing, quadruple, quadruple platinum. <laughs> Go out to all the magazines that support a nigga. All the real motherfuckers. All the stores, the mama pop spots, and our people. All y'all motherfuckers. L.A., California love part motherfucker too. Without gay ass drinks. But you know, man, I, I love what you're doing, G. Lou. You always got a channel in for folks to be able to reach out and speak and say something about their life and what they're doing and get some feedback. And uh, back in the days, we didn't have that. A lot of folks died because they couldn't get that help. They couldn't get that ear to listen. So now today, 2019, we don't have that no more. We have a way where people can speak out and say just one life, G. Lou, you saved enough. So I love you, man. I love you, sister, for calling in and telling your story. Rev Ali is my name. If you ever see me anywhere, tap me on the shoulder. I got a hug for you. And if you need me, I'm, I'm there for you like what they call a uh, 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 Zorro. <laughs> <laughs> well, That's right. thank you. Thank you very much. It means a lot. All money in. Just another nigga from the streets We getting paid at least Aight. Told them hating niggas wait and see Elevator please Stop. Flight rolled up a nigga stay high Up here a little crazy in the daytime If the baby on the balcony She don't wanna leave She know I got something on my sleeve You should wait and see Now everybody know your name right Up here I'm so out the way like This view is everything I could get used to this That's right. You can see a lot more wow. When you're standing on the top floor It's the big house yeah. From the heavens we are all tiny creatures of the same God Surviving in the maze of our own habitat The hood When we grow up Many of us don't make it out we perish before our talents reach our goals and leave debt for those who bury us. Who will carry us but us? Who will do for you but you? As you struggle to carve your way through these streets without failure, nothing beats a failure but a try. As nothing remains but a memory when we die, there are so many obstacles for a hustler. As we think of a better way, Many of us become comfortable and complacent with being basic and sidetracked by the material things that we chase. In our land, we fall short in the eyes of those who judge us, but shine bright in the hearts of those who love us. Neighborhood, so strong this bond that the future will no longer repeat the past. Year after year, new faces become attached to the fabric of our reality. There is always pain but we learn to deceive ourselves and keep it dormant as the days of our lives become burdened with the injustices of our struggles. Can't stop, won't stop. If there was a geographical cure, I think we all choose a different destination. Yet, we find that all hoods are the same, enriched with the hope that our children and their children will become much more than we are and so much more than a name on the wall. If you fall, Get back up with the speed of lightning. Let's not be frightened over that which can only make us stronger. I see the future and refuse to be held back by the past any longer. G. Lou. O. 
G. Music. Uh. There's nowhere for me to run. There's nowhere for me to hide from reality. I'm like a casualty living life after tragedy. Made it to be somewhat famous and live lavishly. On my sack town shit like I'm lavish D. Shout out to the 916, down to the SD. I'm a G with an O right in front of that. Started as a QB, but moved to a running back. Running plays down, never turning phase down. 500 push-ups a day, homie, I stay down. For all around activities, and you can either break bread with me or break down eventually. I got that penitentiary spread, I bust down. Shout out to the homie Bluebird and Blink Lockdown. Upstate doing life plus the homie Bluebird and down 10 and Blink 30 plus. But like the homie KRS said, you must learn. If not, then we're gonna make the same turn. Let the flame burn, remain stern. Refrain from all the bullshit we was raised from. Yeah, we raised some boys to men, some midterm killers. The shit got real up. These are the secrets of war. We the casualties still lay nowhere to run from reality. Still ain't nowhere to run from reality. Reality, homie. It's what we gotta deal with. We gotta get this shit right. G Lu, OG music, man. I'ma stand on it, not around it. Every day, all day. And the shit don't stop. Let that shit ride. Every Wednesday night, 7 to 9 p.m. Pacific, 10 to 12 Eastern. Tune in Friday night. We have a special guest as well, Flashback Fridays. Also, tune in to OG Sundays, uh, Fabulous Low Rider Oldies with me, Flossie B, the lovely Miss Queen Jean, and Hanks of the Gangsta. Yeah. G. Lou, what's up, fam? It's Big Link, host of the Yippee Down 54 and Danny. Listen to the G. Lou show. Topics are real and famous. Regular slides from the pen are on the city blocks of habits and riders. When the lights come on, West Side Men, from 7 to 9 on 92 Point Street, Live Radio with G. Lou and Company. The Herbie Grimms.
Way to took a dream and turned it to a scene. Anything I wanted, everything I needed. Gotta pace yourself, it's all about your baby. You can have it all, it's all about your race. I done took my name and carved it in the semen. Plus your phone, see you back online. 